Hello, and welcome to the stream. I am your DM, Goat. Happy to be here. Uh, why don't we all just uh, go around and quickly introduce ourselves. Starting with Ren. Hi, I'm Ren. And for this special Extra Life charity game, I will be playing the role of Barkst. Barkst is a wonderful knoll who is not strange in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Mayor, go! Hi, I'm Mayor. Today I'm playing Raja. That's it. Okay. Uh, Morgan. Actually, no, wait. No, not Morgan. We're saving Morgan for last. Uh, Graham. Hi, everyone. I'm Graham. And today, I'm playing, like, Maui and Wei Fox with Tatra. And I'm a shifter. And I'm also a fighter. And I like to hit things. And sometimes I like to do things. And it's the best day ever. Uh, Eva, you want to follow that up? Gosh, I don't know how I can, uh, but I'm Eva. I'm playing Alliance Day, um, who is a human, um, just hanging out with her new best buds and Raja. Guesting with us for this special live session, we have Camille. Hello. I am Camille. You can find. Oh well, God. Sorry, I started going into color. Wow. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, today I am playing Lyra, the half elf wizard. Okay. Okay. Um, and then certainly, last but not least, uh, Morgan. Hey everybody, I'm Morgan, and today I will be playing the Kobold Oath of the Swarm. Uh, Ranger, test track. We've all been waiting for a very long time for this. Uh, welcome to the session. This is a 5e D&D game set in my homebrew world known as Chavrin. Um As with everything I run, there is a ton of homebrew. So if something seems weird, that's probably why. Uh, we do have some incentives. If you type uh, exclamation point floofy, you'll see what those are. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um... So feel free to, to screw with my players and with me, and we'll, we'll just have a, a grand old time. So, Outlaws. At the end of our last couple of games, you all managed to be part of a group that foiled a gelatinous cube invasion into the city of Arglo. Kind of strange. Kind of strange. You had a lot of help. Uh, and you... Well, most of you almost died. But... Things went pretty well. You found that suddenly there were a lot of people offering you work. A variety of places. Some, some people you knew, some people you didn't, and some people you only knew by reputation. You decided that perhaps going to the Baron of Bridges, the head of the Goipnik family, would be the best idea. The Goipnik family, as many of you know, are known as being sort of the heads of the criminal underworld in the city as well, in addition to controlling the large bridges that span the massive river that's built in the middle, or that flows through the middle of the city. Uh, Raja, you were just leaving the Temple of the Raven Queen, possibly not very happy with answers you got, and the rest of you, except for our lovely Lyra, are on your way to the Goipnik estate. You arrive, it is massive. Absolutely, ludicrously large for what the rest of the city buildings look like. And it's built in a very specific clockwork style. It's almost like the house is supposed to be a model of the bridges built into a home. There's a gate and a wall around the front. What do y'all do? What does the gate look like? It's just an iron rock gate. 
It's probably the most plain thing. As... Since I ended early down at the temple, mm -hmm. as soon as I saw them approaching, finally, I would have quietly made my back to the group. It took y'all long enough. Hey, Rinks. Hey, Rinks. <laughs> hope we didn't keep you waiting too long. I hope we did. I'd hate for you to get sunburned standing out here. Can't go in. Hey, you were Raja. I'm not going to dignify that with a response. But you can't get in without me anyway, since I have a key, a coin. I put my hand <coughs> in my pocket. Well, we're all here. Why don't you go to the gate then? Let us in. Fine. I'd like to approach the gate. And is anyone there? Not that you notice, really. Seems pretty empty. No guard. It appears to be two, like, iron gate pieces that come together in the center. Doesn't appear to be a lock on it, either. But no they are closed. This yeah, easy. they're closed. Let's frickin' go. They said to come to the Guayvnik estate, show the coin, and we'll get the job. Or at least learn about it. Sure. So, show the coin. To who? There's no one here. Use your eyes. I tried to open the gate. The gate? Have you not met magic? When you go and push on the gate, Mally, you notice that where you'd expect your hand to hit an iron bar, it stops about an inch before that. And as you press, it doesn't seem to go. And a, like, a rippling shimmer kind of goes out from where your hand touched. I put my and second hand out and I start pushing really hard! Mally continues to push. Raja, in front of you at like the center of the gate, um, you actually see a little slot form. It's about coin size. Mally, please use what I hope you have as a brain. Huh? And I will place the coin in the slot. Didn't you just say... Never hmm? mind. Did someone say something? I really wasn't listening. As you put the coin in the slot... Uh, the iron gate very quietly swings open. As it does, the courtyard that you could see through the bars is definitely there, but as the gate sort of passes, it's like an illusion is being brushed away. And now you see guards. You see well-armed individuals. Uh, these are the bridge wardens. There seems to be about seven of them. They're not, they're, they have weapons, but they're not like pointing them at you or anything. Am I able to re-grab the coin? No, it's gone. Yeah, I, uh, I wave as I start walking through just big furry paw up in the air. <clears throat> Warden. An elven individual approaches you. You're here right on time. Excellent. If you wouldn't mind this way... The Baron is waiting. Hmm. Turn and look to everyone else. Did he say right on time? They didn't give us a... <coughs> they sure did. <coughs> Let's go. They don't want to look like idiots. And... So we're always on time. So they look hoity-toity. Well, I rather like being on time for once. I'm going to walk in. Hands in pockets. I, do my, does my armor have pockets? Sure, it's adamantine armor. We'll say it's fancy enough to have pockets. I put my hands in my pockets. Okay. You all go in, and the house, as you're uh, guided through, the house on the inside is as beautiful as it is on the outside. Very intricate. Uh, a lot of, like, strange clockwork mechanisms that don't seem to be doing anything, but they all seem to be turning and moving, and it's almost as though the house is kind of in constant motion. 
Very strange. Despite that, though, the colors are these bright ivories and golds, and it's, as you walk through, what little light does come in through the smaller windows is reflected and magnified, and the entire place just kind of seems to glow. You're guided into a dining room. Seated there. Staring at you, you venture middle-aged gnomish woman. Uh, next to her is is a, a human. Lyra, right? If I'm remembering that. You're muted. Half elf. Half elf, right? I forgot. Sorry. It's fine. Uh, is a half elf. Uh, Lyra, do you want to describe yourself? Lyra is dressed in, um, I'm dressed in, in, in dark blues, um, a long gown, um, and, uh, a, a bag uh, slung across my shoulder, um, dark hair that starts out black, then comes to white, very pointed ears, and, um, glasses. Quite short, I would say, probably 4'11". Oh, yes, welcome, welcome to the Goipnik Estate. It is a pleasure, indeed. The heroes of Yandala's temple. It's wonderful. Sit, sit, sit. Gnome motions to all of you. I immediately sit in a chair and just stare at them like... <gasps> And I, I will don't oh. stare. It's rude. Be all right, good. I'll, I'll just be standing kind of behind Allie. I'll find a chair and kind of like, is there anything on the table? Uh, there's some snacks, like apples and various fruits, but nothing, nothing major now. Okay. I'll, I'll sit at the table and very slowly there'll start to be a small line of beetles going towards the snack and then back towards me. <laughs> I do not sit down. There is, I kind of take a cue from Barkst and just keep my back to a corner and watch. Elian will sit probably next to Mally. Uh, just kind of looking around at how fancy everything is, and just kind of give like a little uh, wave to uh, the gnomish woman and uh, Lyra. Well, I'm Hewing Goitnik. It's a pleasure. Truly, truly, I don't know if you're familiar with my family. We run the bridges. Yes, Anyone? yes, very powerful. Anyone who's been here more than a day knows about the bridges. Oh, well, it's no big thing. Yeah, sure. I thought the bridges were really big. She's being modest. Oh. <laughs> Unlike you. She's pointing at you, Barks. Well, I sent you all that little letter. Because you seem to be people that can get things accomplished. And boy, do I have things that need to be accomplished. Yeah, you need things done in a hurry. We're your people. Well, I think the better question... You know, Elaine, you never agree to anything before you know the terms, condition... And most importantly, the payment. Oh, that's all absolutely true, but I didn't actually agree to do anything. I just said that we're good at getting things done. So, you know, maybe get a little fur out of your ears. What fur? I figured you had to have some somewhere. No. Now, I understand that you all are sort of a group, and that's great. I definitely am interested in more than one person. So, the offer I'm about to make is... Well... It's kind of an all-or-nothing deal. 
So either you're all in, and that's great, and we move on, or I'm gonna have to find a different group. So, I'm gonna give you my offer. I'm gonna take a minute. I, I understand, based on what I saw, that it, it seems that, well, you don't have anyone that specializes in the arcane, and that could be a problem. So, my associate here, Lyra, it's darling right here. I know her daddy, best man. I'm gonna offer her services to you during this careful work. As I'm sure you're aware, the gelatinous cube that you all fought was not the only one. There was like 13 of them. A few of them damaged some property that I own, and that's very upsetting. It damaged a lot of property, actually. But the, the issue is that no one really knows where they came from. Gelatinous cubes are not the smartest individuals. Really, I don't even know if they're individuals. But, they, they gotta come from somewhere. So, I know someone who, well, they recently bought a property from me, and then, lo and behold, a cube emerges from it. I think, maybe, either they might know something, or maybe they saw something. But I would just like you to go talk to them. Find out what they know, and track down any leads that come up. I promise the pay is good. <coughs> you all seem like a group that's motivated by the pay. Yes. So, <coughs> that's the job. If you want more details, you're going to have to accept. But I'm going to leave you all to it for a minute. And she stands up and walks <coughs> out of the room. Oh, question. Mm -hmm. Based on what I know of the Gwaipniks, mm -hmm. um, are they known for one, paying well, and two, keeping their word? They have boats. <laughs> they do have boats. Um, so, Raja, this time, this stint of your life through the city, uh, <laughs> you've heard this and you experienced it previously. Um, you don't get to hold power like they, this family has for as long as they have. Without making good on both threats and promises. Um, pardon me. Would you prefer that that I step step out? No, no, no you can sit right here. I have an empty seat right next to me. It, it's just if you're going to make the, this decision, um, I don't. Um... <clears throat> no. The only no. way we're getting this done is if you're here and <laughs> with us, so I don't see the point in including you. Half the city usually hears our discussions anyway, so you might as well stay. Yeah, with Mally's mouth. And no offense, hmm? but whatever decision we make isn't going to be swayed by whether you listen to us or not. <coughs> by the way, who's your pops? Uh, my father is um, a wizard. Does your wizard father have a name? He does. Can I inside check if her dad's a wizard? I see you're a little hesitant, but I need to know if you're actually any good. If you're not, you're not a use. You're not used to us. What? What does my father have to do with me being any good? Don't listen to him. He's just. We don't have, like, some sort of application or standards. Like, <laughs> what what are your skills, Lyra? Like, what what can we rely on you to do? That's the question. That's... We don't need, like, a pedigree or whatever. I study at the Arcanum Under... And, uh... Go... Go! Who do I study under? Uh... I should have that character's name written down. Uh, Dalaran. And uh, Dalaran. <clears throat> you, 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 you have been to the Arcanuma? I live there currently. Ah, do you know Rookproof? 
You have <laughs> no idea who he's talking about. No, I, I, I'm, af I'm afraid I don't. He's big and floofy. Is he a dog? No, 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 no. He's a, he's a, a fur furbolgy person. Furbolg. Upon mention yes. of a furbolg, you do recall there was a wizard named Rufus who had just come through, um, but had Rufus. been sent out on assignment to the north. Yes, I did know Rufus. Uh, yes, Ruf Luf is my friend. Any friend of Ruf Ruf is a, a, fr a friend of mine? Sure. Good, good, good. What about, what about angry? Damn, it was a, it was a tabaxi that led me through, right? Yes, it was a very large, very angry tabaxi. What about large tabaxi? Are you friends with him? You assume he's talking about the Guardian, and no one's really friends with the Guardian. Uh, as much as any one can, can be. Alright. Well, as much as I love this who's who that we've got going on, <coughs> I'm assuming this uh, <clears throat> talking to folks idea that this quite Nick woman wants is us just, you know, roughing some folks up. <clears throat> Sounds pretty simple. She said talk, I... though. Yeah, talk. Yeah, talking is important. <laughs> you know what else is important? I'm going to be sticking a hand in my bag of fruit, grabbing a banana, and think fast! And I'm going to toss a banana at Lyra. Uh, should he make it a tag roll? Maui, make a strength test. Okay. Uh, that's a 22. Should she? I'm sorry. Uh, go, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and make a, a ranged attack roll. Four. My armor class is 12. <laughs> okay, well, I think a 17 plus, I think my modifier fires a plus three. Yeah, so a 20. That's without proficiency. Lyra, a banana hits you in the shoulder and, like, uh, pops out of the, the skin a little bit and kind of slimy. Ew. Hell no. Are you waste food, Mally? Not wasting. I mean, had that been an ooze, they'd be dead. Like, I almost was. It was like kapow, and then I was like ah, and then it like <laughs> Mally, Mally, Mally. I that is... heard that you all took down and what I know that they did before they yes, did. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Hewan would have told you. Hewan has has to told me quite a bit about about your adventures, and I, I'm quite impressed. <laughs> yes, me and Am took it down. Other other ones were distractions. V very good. Excuse me. Anyway. You're taking this job or not? Sounds simple enough. I would love to get paid. I'm gonna do whatever Bartst wants to do, honestly. <laughs> well, if they can give us a boat, maybe it'll be worth our while. Maybe if you play your cards and say your words right, they might. Unlike you, Raja, I always play my cards right. Mm-hmm. The, the Gwipniks are, are personal friends of my family. I could, I could, I could speak to them. <laughs> I'm looking for more money or, or, or something. Money is good. No, I think, no? I, I, I think we accept. I'm willing That's to good. negotiate on what payment you may be like, but I am highly interested. Uh, what are you? What are you interested? That's going to be between me and the Gwicknix. Oh, okay, sure, of course, C of course. Um, right. Pay no attention to wrinkly face. They're I mean. would prefer it, actually. Do one of y'all get up and let them know that you're uh, at a decision? Oh, oh, 
I'm already up. I'll walk across towards the door and just slam my palm on the door a couple times. Oh, wonderful. I assume I'm being called back here for the, the, the decision. Yeah. Yeah, there is. <coughs> what? Are, are you quite all right? Uh, I'll look at Lyra. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. And, uh... Sure. We'll take the job. Learn to tune it out after a while. Wonderful, wonderful. Excellent. All right, so, before we continue, let's talk about pay. Now, what's your normal rate for some light investigation? I believe they were um, talking about $100 an hour. 100 gold an hour. That's ridiculous. I'm only teasing. Give them my rate. Hmm. And what's your rate? Well, Moira is more interested usually in items and certain things of study. I don't think everyone's going to want that, but how about this? We've got a few trinkets laying around that I think a few of you might like. So I can give you those and if you come back successful, I can do a gold payment too. Like a hundred gold. Each. I'm only asking you to talk to somebody. Now, if there's certain dangers that come up and you have to do more, then perhaps a further negotiation can happen. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a bit of an estimate. Yes, yes. Combat multiplier. I think that's fair. Yeah, sounds exceedingly reasonable. Wonderful, wonderful. So, here's what I'm gonna do. She reaches into a, a little bag at her side. She pulls out a little box. She says, you know, I... There's something about you. I'm just pointing over at Raja. I just, I remember something. I think, she taps on the box. I think you're gonna like this. She pushes it across and slides. Consider this your down payment. Trust me, it's worth it. I will cautiously take the box and take a look inside. When you open the box, you find this strange aquamarine bracelet um it's very narrow it's very thin as you look at though it, pe it appears to be made of some kind of strange fish scales and it doesn't feel wet but it definitely has a certain like slick feeling to it what is this i'm just sure that uh, someone of your particular skills could make use of something like this Stylish. You put it on, okay? And let's just say you need to get in somewhere. And oh, you left your key inside. Well, clearly you need to get inside, but if you break your door down, then you gotta buy a new door, and that's just a hassle. Say this, no more. This, yeah, it'll, it'll say help no you. more. It will also let you know. If people that would want to stop you from getting inside to get your key are approaching. Helps keep you safe. I appreciate you looking out for my safety. I just, I think this will benefit you all. Now does everything sound good? On the payment end? Yes. Wonderful. Let's go for the satisfied. So. What you're going to need to do is you're going to go across town. There's the, oh, what was it called? Um, I don't go there very often. I don't really get along with the proprietor. Uh, but you're going to go to the, what 
It used it's it's some little lounge or bar. It used to be called the Griffin's Roast, but then a few years ago somebody bought it and it turned it into like this music place. Um. Oh, they called it something. Uh, the the Performer's Muse or something like that. But it's, it's across on the other side of the river, about, oh, 20 minutes downtown. Does this ring a bell? Uh, make a history check. Sure. All right, and when we get there, who are we supposed to talk to? Oh, you're looking for the proprietor. Does the proprietor have a name? Yes, the proprietor is... Uh, a half orcish man uh, named uh, uh, Brodak Kruldorf. Now I'm 11. Doesn't sound super familiar. Raja, you've heard of this place? Um, mm -hmm. And you've definitely heard of this place as a uh, place where you can go to do business. Cool. Uh, what was What did they want us to talk to the proprietor about, did they say? This is... Uh, what they mentioned earlier was that the owner, Brodak, bought some land from Hewan, and then suddenly, like two days later, Gelatinous Cubes came out of that, that building that was on that land, and uh, Madame, the Baron Goifnik thinks that they might know something about this. Alright, so you're giving us a lead. Perfect. I try to be very accommodating. When we all work together, we all get what we want. I like where your head's at. Now, everything good? Everyone, hearts and minds clear? Do we get, like, another token or anything? How do we get back in? Oh, they'll just let you back in. That was, a. Uh... Those who haven't agreed to do business, they need a little token. But once you've agreed to do business, you can just come in. Thank you. Sorry about the banana. B banana? Uh, oh, are, are you talking about talking to me? Oh, no. I, I mean, is it on the floor? Is it still on the floor? Yes. I'm going to walk over and just pick the banana back up. Oh, we can get a fresh banana if that's... Oh, if you want that one, just take it. It's fine. It's fine. Now, unless you have anything else for me, I've got some other business to attend to, and you all have a job. Everybody wins. Can, I agree. Can I have a banana? Sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I pull out my giant bag of fruit. Um, what type of fruits do I even have in this? They are all citrus. <laughs> Bananas are not a citrus fruit. <laughs> so, you... You don't have any bananas in your bag. Oh no. <laughs> there are Barks. some bananas on the table though. Okay. Barks, do um. I even dare ask? Mally, I've already told you. Lemons are not bananas. Are you sure? They're both yellow, but mm -hmm. they're shaped very differently. Your brother has both your brain cells. Huh? I... That bracelet like really brings the fuck you out of your eyes. And I'm gonna go just walk towards the door. Wonderful. Do the rest of you follow? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna walk up behind yeah. Raja, and I'm just gonna, like, clasp you on the shoulder and look at you and just say, When we all work together, we get what we want. When the hell did you become a fountain of platitudes, sourpuss? When money's fucking involved. Oh, what is fucking money? I will take a banana off the counter, please. <laughs> I leave. I leave. Uh, Lyra, don't try and keep up. Because... And I just motion at Mally. It's impossible. Noted. I'm just humming really loudly. 
Okay, well, you all head to the uh, Performer's Muse, or whatever it was called. Yeah, what time of day yeah. is it? I, I mean, you got here kind of around just before noon. So, this is going to be, uh, I mean, it hasn't been that long since you were here. Sorry, Morgan. No. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Um, as we get to the performer's news, um, should we, um, should we look around the place first? Are we looking for food? What are we looking for? We're looking for exits. It's no good to go to places without exits. I, we're, we're on the street. Like you can't, you can't okay. exit a street. No, the, the, the performer's hall. Makes sense. Have I done business here before? Not since you've been back to the town. Um, and before, it was a much different environment. This... As you all are approaching, the reputation you've heard of it is actually that it's, it's quite a nice little concert venue. Um, yeah, it's if it's a front, it's a good front because it probably makes some money. But it's also, well, like I said, where you've heard that if you want to go and have a private conversation with somebody, that well, you can have a private conversation with somebody. So are we splitting into groups um, to look around? I, I, I call dibs on Lyra and Elaine. And I get stuck with the mean ones. Yeah, but at least with us, we'll get stuff done. You both hey, look just for exits. Time. <clears throat> I'll look for Brodeck. Wait, we should just Okay. Do you want to go look for your exits? Yes. I will skitter off. Are there any alleys or like go ahead and roll other the entrances? I'll head the opposite direction. I guess. Okay. I'm gonna use that advantage that Pal gave us. Mm. Yep, remember. That's much better. Use those up as the chat is being so kind to donate to our wonderful charity. All right, that is a dirty 20. Wonderful. Elaine, are you also rolling? Uh, 16. Okay. Uh, you find that, I mean, while there's the front entrance, uh, there appears to be, there's only uh, an alley around one side. On that side, there does appear to be a side door, and around the back, there does appear to be a back exit as well. So there's several ways in and out of the place. You also do see a ladder on the back side, Daz. Looks like it has roof access. It's about a two, two and a half story building, something like that. Okay, I'll, I'll make note of that and come back around to the front if the group is still there. I, um, I would wait for Daz. There is a there is a ladder to the roof in the back. But otherwise it seems like no more like this. Shall we go in? Yes. Wait in. When you enter this place, it, it's it's dimly lit, but you can see throughout the entire thing. The furniture is made of these like beautiful red felts and silks, and the it's immaculately clean. The tables are the some rich brown wood. Um, there there's not many people in here right now. A few loose people scattered. Uh, on the stage, there are a few musicians with a couple instruments. They seem to be tuning and you know, they're not really performing right now. Um, off to sort of the far right, you do see a, a bar area. And off to the left, you see a door. Um, you assume maybe it goes back to some offices or something. 
because it doesn't quite meet up with the edge of the building like you saw. Uh, random staff walking by. Anyone? Um, the, there's the... Somebody was behind the bar, um, and there's one or two people out amongst the tables. Um, what was the proprietor's name again? Brodak Krudorf. I would like to go up to the, um, bar. Mm -hmm. And I would like to take out a small sack and place it in front of him. We've got important business to talk to with Brodak, please. And I have put a chunk of copper in front of him. Sooner the better. The kind of odd looking half elf. Like you've seen a lot of half elves. I mean, Lyra's with you. Uh, this half elf is just notably shorter. The features are a little different. It's it's interesting, but uh, he's like, oh, uh, what uh, what business you got with the boss? He's not. He doesn't have any appointments this morning or the after, early afternoon, whatever it is. I push the um bag closer to him. Yeah, I, I see your money. That doesn't really affect the boss's availability. <clears throat> Raja, just a moment. And um, I kind of sidle up next to you. Look, buddy, uh, what's your name? They have like a name tag or something. They don't have a name tag. Uh, I'm not really sure it's important. We usually don't give out our names or at work. All right, well, I'm just going to call you Jack. All right, Jack, look, sure. here's the deal. We're here on behalf of someone very important, and we have some questions we need to ask of Mr. Brodak. Now, I don't want to say it's in your best interest to let us talk to him, but it's in your best interest to let us talk to Brodak. Hey, Master. Yes. Do I know this man? You know of Brodak. Um. What is it that you, I mean, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm seeing if I've ever been in here before, if I, if I would have met this person. How often do you go to shady dive bars? You tell me. I, it's, I mean, it's not, with, with your studies of the Arcana Mall, this isn't your usual place. It's not where you'd find implements or artifacts or supplies for your studies. Uh, but, I mean, it's getting a little frisky one night. It's not a bad spot to hang out. Um. We will say that you have seen Brodak perform. Brodak is a, a singer, and this is the stage that he uses quite frequently. So if, you, if you've been here on any night, you've probably seen him performing. Okay. Dashing gentleman. That's all. Sorry. Uh, Barks, are you in trying to intimidate or persuade? Uh, <clears throat> uh, I could go with either one, but I'm going to flash my toothiest smile at this person, and uh, we'll make it a nice intimidation roll. Can I assist? Sure. So that would usually I... give you advantage. However, <laughs> uh, for other reasons, you have disadvantage. So go ahead. I have disadvantage. So it, it evens out, so you just roll regular. Oh, I just yeah. roll regular. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, that was great. Uh, it's an 8, a 7, 15. So it comes out, and you're giving you a little smile. The room darkens a bit. <laughs> I don't think you want to be threatening folks in my bar. Standing very close behind you is a fairly tall half orc gentleman. Can you repeat it, repeat his name for me? I'm gonna keep as soon as you say it, it leaves my brain. Rodak Crudorf. Type it in our chat. 
how big is Sprodak? On a scale of can I do I think I could throw them? No. Or do I think they can throw me? <laughs> they could throw several of you. Okay. Simultaneously. Can I say in Orcish? We do not mean to offend, sir. We merely wish to have a conversation. Could we talk to you, please? I suppose so. And you, f you see him, like, release a little bit of tension he's holding in his body. And he shrinks. Down to about, like, five foot three. Still taller than I am. I will hold out my hand for him to shake. He takes your hand. He will bring it up for a kiss, if you allow it. I will, I will give him a, a, a gentle curtsy. Okay. Lyra Kent again. Brodak Rudor. It's wonderful to see someone with manners. But I'm sure we're just getting off on the wrong foot. Isn't that right, my Nolish friend? Yeah, just ask Jack. Things would have been a lot nicer if he just helped us out. You mean Braddish? Oh, Braddish. Like the fruit? That's a vegetable, Maddie. Oh. And it's radish. Oh. Well, um... Let's... Take this conversation over here. Mr. He Crudak. directs you all to the, the door you saw off on the left side. Such Is there any... Oh, sorry, after you. It's such a startle to see you all over the stage, sir. Oh, you've seen me perform, huh? I'm quite a fan. I always like to make time for my fans. My dear friends um, have some business. I'm simply here to, to accompany them. Mm, business. Business from whom? So I'd like to lean over to Mally and say, she said we're friends. I grin as I would like to take a look around and see if there's anyone watching us. Nope. Nobody watching us. Okay, perfect. I don't think so if you pay any mind. Here to ask some questions about some property you recently acquired. So you and sent you. Yep. All right. What's problem? the old Baron want? To pay us to ask you about the the oozes that you had trouble with, or well, people on your behalf oozes. had trouble with. Someone had trouble with oozes. And you might know who. We hear <clears throat> the property you bought is lousy with them. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. So we figured we'd come by, talk to you, maybe schmooze a little bit, <clears throat> and then you'd let us poke around and see what's going on. Huh. Well. Funny thing. Let's let's take this into an office. Guides you all through a little hallway into a very, very lavish sitting room. Can I stay near the door while we have that conversation? Sure, sure. Can I stay near him? Can I stay outside of the room? Uh come on now. Little lady, no, no sense hanging out back there. And Lyra, he certainly does not stop you. I'm not letting him. No. I would. I don't like to hide things. I... <laughs> I'm a gentleman of honesty. However... I don't have access to that property anymore. Someone else wanted it. The Goitniks wouldn't sell it to them. But they would sell it to me, thinking that well, they could get something over on me or whatever. So I bought it and then sold it to the other interested party. That's smart. 
What did you send it to? Uh, human woman. For your sake, I hope the Gwyknicks don't find out that you sold it to someone <laughs> they weren't agreeable two with. Two shits that the Gwyknicks find out. If the Gordnicks <laughs> really had any problems, they would have marched their way into this lounge years ago, but <laughs> they don't show their face wherever there's real class. Wait, so when did this all happen? In class? I bought it from the Gordnicks about two days ago. You move quick. And you said human woman. What is her name? Oh, the human? No. I believe it was, uh... Kadia. She wanted it. Didn't really get into specifics as to what she wanted it for, but... She had good money. And that's all I really cared about. Does that name sound familiar at all? No. Sold it to Kadia. Next day, oozes. I haven't seen Kaja since. You know why the Koyknicks would not sell to Kaja? No one really got into that specifics. I will say that uh, Kaja came off as a bit flighty. Real nervous type. She kind of always seemed like she was about to pull an arrow out of that quiver. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just got a bad vibe. Maybe it was. <laughs> Could have been any number of things, really. You think Where? That... You think that. That she was just a middleman? Hard to say. Like I said, she had the money. She came to me with the plan. Didn't mind doing it. Here we are. She's a spellcaster by any chance? You wouldn't happen to know that, would you? People don't usually go casting spells in my bar. Doesn't wind up as helpful as they think it will. <laughs> Did she pay a reasonable price, or? No, oh, very reasonable. So yourself, Katia? You have not seen. Where did you meet her before? She came here. Surely, surely you check on business partners. It was a one-time sale. I didn't really see it necessary to look into it past that. You know if she's still at the property? <laughs> the property is... Well, Who's poop? It's not in ruins, but it's... Uh... It had a gelatinous cube burst through one of its walls, I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, if it doesn't belong to you anymore, you can give us the address so we can poke around free and clear of your conscience. By all means. I've got a, a question for you, though. What's, uh, what's the Baron paying you? Counter offer? I didn't make any counter offer. I just asked what the Baron was paying you. Memory is crap goat. What was it again? Uh, the trinket that you've already been given, and uh, I believe it was a hundred gold. Enough. <laughs> I respect the loyalty. Oh, don't mistake <clears throat> determination for loyalty. Especially not blind. <laughs> I'm not asking you to betray any deals you've made. Far be it from me. However, how if you're going to investigate a 
got my own vested interests. How about, uh, I give you a little something in exchange. You let me know what you find before you go back to the woods. Yeah. Last time I checked, we weren't sworn to secrecy with the Doifix. I see no problem with this. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That works for me. All right. Excellent. On your way out, just tell Bradish that I said to give you a little top shelf special. Hey, thanks. Yeah, that was really nice of you. Um, I'm gonna reach in my bag and put pull out a banana and put it on the corner of his desk. <laughs> Allie, that that that's a lemon. Well, it's no wheel of cheese, but scurvy is a thing. Takes the lemon. I'm just gonna head out. <laughs> cool. Going to, uh... To find Radish. Yeah, skip up to the bar. Radish! You have to be given top shelf. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, Radish. Please. Thank you. Lost the top shelf. Wow. Oh, wow. All right. All right. He reaches down and out from under the bar pulls out this massive crossbow. I don't know if any of y'all are interested in little trinkets like these, but I. That's what the boss said to give you. I have to be a crossbow? This is what he told me to give out to anybody who asked for, well, anybody who just had a meeting with him and then came and asked for top show. My hand shoots out on the, the haft of the weapon, and I turn and look at everyone with a big toothy grin. This is mine. As you put your hand on it, you, you've had your eye on a few crossbows around town. You've had... You've had some plans, maybe, you know, buy a ship for Mally, get you outfitted with something nice. As soon as this thing is in your hand, and it is made of this beautiful dark blue metal. You feel ready to go. There's, your aim is going to be true. It's going to be hard to stop Barks. Next cube we find. Well, what do you do when you reduce a cube? You just make it more cubes, right? I thought you made it squared. We're going to flatten it. Jelly. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I, I just take it and feel the heft, mm -hmm. and then sling it over my back with the collection of other crossbows I already have. Do you know it? Okay. Outlaw, where are you heading now? Well, we got the address, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I say let's, let's head to the address. Yeah. If there's anyone that's looking into buying some fruit on the way, I'll probably sell all the fruit. Uh, what's everybody's passive perception? Twelve. Teen. Thirteen for me. Fourteen. Anybody fifteen or higher? Ah, okay. Yeah. Raja. As you all are leaving, you walk out, go down the road to the right, down that one alleyway for a split second you see a masked individual that looks a lot like the two that you all fought in Yandala's temple yesterday 
But it's very quick. Very quick. Like, okay. You notice it, and the person's gone. As I pass by, I let out a very low shh and follow the rest of the group. Okay. The trip to the uh, building is pretty uneventful. Um, this section of the city didn't seem to get too terribly damaged. Um, though you assume that where you're heading to does have a bit of uh, battle wear. Though as you're approaching, you notice something strange. It's like one in the afternoon. Nobody's on the road. I had hair, it would be bristling. Wait, where did everybody go? That check doesn't like this. I'm wondering if it's because wondering if those masked figures are around. Is there any, like, along the road, is there, are there, like, doors or barrels or anything that could be, like, hidden or ducked behind? No, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and burn one of my two DM crits that have been given to me. <laughs> oh my. I just rolled a nat one, and I would really like that not to be the case there. Um. You hear a faint whistling sound. Kind of whistling. Mally, I need like you a to crossbow? make a crossbow. Mally, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, okay. At disadvantage. I'm gonna use my reroll. <laughs> All right. So with my reroll, that is a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay, um, a bola whizzes through the air, hits one of your legs, but you manage to step up on the other one real quick as it kind of skitters and doesn't manage to wrap around you. Don't see where it came from, though. So there's no one on the roofs or anything like that? Not that you see. I can cover it! Can I pick up the bola? Sure. Yeah, I'll call out out loud, Oi, Bucklehead, you miss! Hey, hurry! I'm... <laughs> Bolting for whatever cover there yeah. is. I need Damn. everyone to roll initiative. Yeah. Fucking cover, you idiot. Hey, I was insulting them as a bonus action. Oh. Alright, higher than 20. I got a 22. Raja. Bringing up the front. 15 to 20. 15. Oh, Lord. Nope, okay. 16. 15 for Barks. Ten to 15? Or 10 to 14, kind of. 13. 12. Okay, Elaine, what'd you get? Seven. Oof. Okay. Just sent the initiative order in our little chat. Raja, you're up first. Um, can I... Based off the tra tra trajectory, can um, we at least see if it came at ground level or from the roofs? It... Mm, you didn't see much of its flight. You more just saw it hitting at the... Hitting at Mally's legs. Mm -hmm. Um, you're really not sure. Weird and exotic weapons are not really a focus of yours. Fair, fair. Um, so since I can't really see anyone, what I would like to do is, um, how high are the roofs around here? Um, the roofs around here. Uh, most of them are about 20, 30 feet high. So what I would like to do is I would like to um, use my action and my movement action to get over to a building and climb onto a roof. Make me athletics test. I have a climb speed. That is true. You are a tabaxi. 
Make, go ahead and make me athletic test though, just because there's not there's no ladders or anything, so you're kind of makeshifting your way up. How fast? Oh, I got a seven. It, it uses double movement, unfortunately, but you can because you naturally have a climb speed. Uh, you can get up on one of the roofs. Cool. And then I will just start scanning. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So and Des, if possible, stay like low. Sure. Des, you bolted toward a building. The rest of you are all just kind of sitting there, like the ducks that you are. Um. Let's see. Mally and Elaine. Mally, does a twenty-four hit you? Yeah, that's gonna hit. Elaine, seventeen. Yeah. I need you both to make strength saving throws. Nineteen. That is a eighteen for me. Okay. Um, both of you take five bludgeoning damage. And Mally, you are knocked prone. As this uh, fat rubber bolt impa impacts against you and knocks you over. Uh, Elaine, you get hit, but you kind of manage to absorb it a little bit. Uh, not quite get knocked over, but whew, that's going to leave a bruise. Lyra. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use my other two crits. And now, Lyra, it's your turn. Oh, 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 dear, dear lord. Oh, god. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to, um, cast Mage Armor. <laughs> what does that look like? Um, um, like a, a, a large bubble. <laughs> a bubble made of blue energy and activate an arcane ward. Um, and then I am going to, that was my action to cast Mage Armor. Mm hmm um, my armor class is now only a 14. <laughs> and you, I'll see, I don't want to use my, I don't have a bonus action. Um, I want to look around, but I don't, I know I don't have enough action economy to make a, a perception check. I just want to see what I can see with my free action. Um, you're seeing where the bolts came from doesn't seem to make any sense. So you're, you're looking about, like, you're trying to figure out trajectory, you're trying to figure out where this is, you're trying to figure out if they're up, they're down. It doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Okay. In that case, I will run, see if I can get some cover. Okay, cool. You run Panicking. Uh, uh, go, 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 go on. Oh, God. Barkst. Uh, just because I hadn't quite gotten those stats to you yet, that's a plus two crossbow in case you want to use it. Uh, is it a light or heavy? Heavy. Ooh. Oh, do I? I'll go ahead and get that in my equipment list. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and draw that, seeing as I got it. Sure. You want to use your bonus action to make a perception test to see if you can tell where they came from? You know, that sounds great. I would love to do that. Roll that beautiful bean footage. So I'm just kind of standing in the middle of the street, and I just look up to the roofs, look down the alleyways, and roll a natural 20, which puts me at a total of uh, perception 22. Okay, while everyone else is panicking, looking around, looking up, looking down, you can actually look forward. Why you decide to look that way? You're not sure, but, you know, everyone else is looking this way, where it seemed like all the things came from. And just on one of the rooftops, about three or four buildings down, you can see two red and black masked figures. They're trying to stay low, but you catch just a glimpse of them as they're moving around. I am going to whistle through my teeth. Um, as a signal and nod ahead and hopefully see hopefully get other folks to hone in on, on that area Sure. and I'm just going to level the crossbow and see if I can uh, take a shot at someone from my current vantage point because whatever sure go ahead and make that roll 
I ain't moving. Oh, that's <clears throat> a 14 plus. Oh, man, it's been a while since I've fought with sparks. Um, that is uh, plus two, 21. 21, roll that damage. Ooh. You notice how with... low they are, and so instead of shooting directly at, you kind of do this high angle and get this nice arc as you go into your... <clears throat> Plus two, 14. Damage. 14 damage. Holy crap. <clears throat> okay, okay. As, as, after I shoot and kind of surmise I shoot one of them, I, uh, I laugh. <clears throat> hey, Brinks. I tagged one of them. You want to go stalk them? And I'll uh, pass my turn. Okay. That is going to make it Dada's turn. So, from whatever small amount of cover I had, I'm just going to start uh, like thumping my chest a little bit. And the, uh, the, the kind of light swarm of bugs around me is going to just start to pour out of me and there is going to be just a huge agitated swarm of beetles kind of flying in the air all around me and uh did i see where uh barks took a shot you did you did and when you look over you do see as, as you hear the uh someone stand up kind of briefly as they're trying to move. You recognize these people. It's the ones that paid you way too much money to read your fortune. <laughs> uh, the, ah, you stupid elves! And we'll pull out... Um, I will pull out hit my bow and just give, like, a low growl and a small, like, cadre of beetles attach themselves to the tip of the arrow and I will take a shot. Okay. Make uh make that roll. Oh, and is it am I in direct sunlight or no? You've moved off into cover, so no, you're not in direct sunlight. Okay. Is that still a trait they have? Yes, they do still have sunlight sensitivity. Okay. Uh, that doesn't matter because I still rolled poorly. Um do you that's, still have an uh, advantage? Uh, no, I think hurt. I used my yeah. I think I used mine already. Um so that's like a 10, 11. Unfortunately, uh, I don't, you, you, you fire the beetles, they kind of slam against the building. Maybe, maybe you don't really want to uh, hurt those elves. Hark's not in. Um, and how far away is that building and whatnot, is it? Like we're talking it's like two or three buildings down so it's like 60 80 feet okay i'll kind of scramble forward closer still trying to keep to some form of cover obviously i'm not like hiding per se but whatever cover i can get um from the street okay sure that's gonna bring us to maui i stand up and rub my nose where it just smashed on the pavement and I'm going to walk 15 feet. I'm assuming I probably didn't see where they are. No. So I'm just going to flip off every direction and take the dodge action. What does that look like? Uh, well, Mally is also going to bonus action shift. So hmm. she lets out this snarl of a mixture of like indignation and just anger and her teeth kind of grow and elongate into these like long fangs and two poofy floofy ears just pop out of her skull mm -hmm. okay. and her eyes kind of like yellow a little bit and like get more primal okay and i think oi fuckleheads come get me <laughs> okay that's it. That's my action. That's what I do. I was about to say, do you want to make that like 
an intimidation or a persuasion or something? Oh, sure, yeah. We'll go into... Well, I was taking the dodge action, so I figured I probably can't. Isn't that a bonus action, I thought you said? Uh, dodge action is always my action action. Oh, that's Bonus right, that's action right. with shift. That's a, that's a monk thing. My bad. Okay, never mind. Okay. And uh, certainly not least, Elaine. I heard that. Um, I did. I see where Barks was pointing. Yes, yes. And fired because I was still up. Mm -hmm. Can I see both people? You can just see the one. Okay. Uh, and they look just sort of mad at the world, or do they look like wounded? Do they look upset? You only see them for like a brief second. So, and they're like. 60, 80 feet from you. So I have no idea. Okay. No, not really sure. That's fine. Um, in which case, I'm just going to um, draw and shoot my very fancy and pretty bow, which is just going to be sharp. Not okay. anything extra. Make that roll. Okay. 23. I can math. Roll that damage. Ten. Okay. Ten. Excellent. Ah! Ah, shit. You hear? And Raja, we're back to you. Um. Now, am I able to see them now? That Barks has. You're at least aware of where they are. They've sort of ducked back down. So they have partial cover at the very least. Maybe three quarters. Uh. Okay, I, but I can get a general idea of where they are yeah. behind, at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how far away? Like from my roof. 60 feet away. I'd like to clamber to the other side of the roof quick, uh, okay. growling slightly ears back. And um, what I would like to do is try to angle myself if I can, as far as I can. Okay. Um, to get a better shot at them. Sure, sure. And I will cast a spiritual weapon. Ooh, what's the how, what's the range on that cast? It's a sixty foot range. All right. So, what does your spiritual weapon look like, Raja? I don't know. What's the favored weapon of the Raven Queen? <laughs> um, scimitar. It is. A scimitar. It's a what? That's right. Scimitar. Um. So. Um. Thank you, Camille. <laughs> Um, so I have like a kind of like a stylized raven tattoo on my forehead and it almost kind of flies out at them turning into a scimitar and it just goes beeline for whatever one I can get in my view. Nice. Uh, go ahead and make that attack roll. That is a 22. Please roll that damage. <laughs> that is a total of 10 damage. And as I was um, rolling, running over the roof, I drew my crossbow, and I would also like to fire my crossbow at them because spiritual weapon is a bonus, a bonus action. action to cast. Yeah, go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage. That is a uh, higher than what I got before. Twenty-four. Yeah, yeah, definitely go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> and that will be a uh, seven. Okay, is that the end of your turn? That is, and I will crouch slightly. Punch so mode. as as the the scimitar comes, they actually both stand up and try to move out of the way. One gets caught. Uh, your next attack hits the hits one of them that doesn't seem like they've been hit very much. Um, they look at each other. They look at you. And they say something. You can tell because there's like there's a brief bit of back and forth between them. They're too far away for you to really hear it though. Uh, one of them puts a hand on the other one's shoulder and phew, they vanish. Did I see that? Yes. Encounter spell. Right, you are with it. Uh, yeah, yeah, make uh, make that roll. I would like to cast it at uh, fifth level. All right, you don't need to make that roll. Um, uh, they start to vanish. They start to peel away from reality, and then <laughs> they seem stuck look at you one of them reaches into a bag and pulls out this long strand of of these these 
purple beads that also seem to be floating after each other. And takes them, throws them at you. I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw as I turn the music back to combat. Dodge action doesn't help me with that, does it? Wait, even me on the roof? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the was, the what beads seem to go everywhere. Okay. What was the saving throw? What did I say? Dex 30? Dex. Dex. Yeah, thank you. 21. 18. 18. Natural 20 for 23. 19. Natural 1 for 3. Oof. Oh. Oof. Everyone but Elaine is knocked prone, because apparently you can't knock Elaine down. Holy crap. The rest of you also take, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 18, 21, plus 29. The rest of you also take 18 force damage. My ward will take all of that. Good. As an explosion of force where each bead impacted near you seems to just weave a shockwave through. By the time you're able to sort of recollect your senses and look up, they're no longer on the roof. You're not sure where they are. I've been knocked on my ass. I just ah. yell. Next time, let them go. <laughs> you know that sound cats make? That yowl? Mm -hmm. That. <laughs> Mally just... <laughs> Mally just lays there. She has stood up and fallen down twice now. She's just gonna... You know, this is... She's just gonna, like, roll. <laughs> uh, Lyra, it's your turn. And I don't see them. No, you don't. Can I use my action to make a perception check? Yes. I'm going to use my advantage. 18 plus zero. <sighs> Unfortunately, no. You don't see them anywhere. Bitch. I will um, bonus action Misty Step to where they, where they were and gain two points back of my ward. Okay. Um, and see if if I can see anything from up there. You find a small uh, red and purple bag on the ground, but other than that, you don't see them. Actually, I get four points back. Uh, um, do I see anyone? No. You don't see tracks. You don't see footprints. You don't see anything. I'll look in the bag. In the bag are more of these beads. I put the bag in my bag. Do we notice? And that is where we're gonna go ahead and go to break. So, everybody, stretch. Uh, get somebody to eat, have a snack. We're gonna hear from our sponsors real quick. And uh, we'll be back here in just a few minutes. Oh, baby, I love your madness. Welcome to our Patreon! Here, on Open for Adventure, we are making high-quality Dungeons & Dragons content, folks! We have a great big world to share with you, and by becoming a patron, you can help us explore and expand upon this adventure. With your support, we can invest in more amazing artwork, better mics, fancy cameras, and overall stream quality. Not to mention, help us get some amazing new merch that we can use for giveaways. What do you get by becoming a patron? I'm so glad you asked. Let's take a look at the different levels and give you a sneak peek at what you can get at each tier. Did you know that the family of the First Lord Theo, the leader of the Rebellion Against the Empire, actually invented firearms nearly 25 years prior to the current campaign? The designs for this high-tech weapon are the Delaney family's best-kept secret. Also, they were originally invented by the late First Lady Victoria, Theo's mother. Access to lore leaks like this is what you can expect from the first tier, written in blog-style posts after each weekly session. Ever wonder what goes on off-camera? 
The next three tiers give you exactly that. With Stolen Moments, you can get access to text-based roleplay moments, highlighting experiences that don't make it onto the stream, like Leona's training session with Ray and Esme. Stolen Moments Plus gives you access to roleplay moments featuring our guests, non-player characters, and historical figures, featuring the likes of Marshall, Annalena, and even the Empress herself. And Roleplay Addiction takes us to a whole other level. This tier gives you exclusive 30-minute videos of canon interactions not otherwise seen on stream, like late-night drunken interactions between paladins or tender moments featuring your favorite character ships. The Warm Fuzzies is super simple. It's everything I've listed so far, and also you get your name on stream after our weekly regular sessions. Every session and our undying love. And finally, the most epic of all Patreon tiers. Drum roll, please. <laughs> the Lore Master. This ultimate and final tier gets you first look access at all of the content going into our upcoming, official, open for adventure campaign setting. Lore, maps, monsters, items, dungeons, dragons, a Go ahead, have a look around, make yourself at home, and consider becoming a patron to help us make this fantasy world a little bit closer to reality. Oh, hi! My name is Express Love. I'm the Senmarian God of Coffee. Did you know that in Senmaria, every cup of coffee is made with found familiar coffee beans? That's canon. In Senmaria, every cup of coffee is good coffee because it's made with love by found familiar. Did you know that every bag of found familiar coffee features artwork from incredible members of the tabletop gaming community? That's canon. Each blend and roast of found familiar coffee features cool D&D names like Thieves' Cant, Face Step, and Packed Magic. In Sinmaria, every royal meeting that Ray attends features the Cartographer's Blend, a brew of coffee made by found familiar in conjunction with Devon Rue. Now that's canon. Found familiar coffee. Buy it today.
Wow. Suddenly. Oh. Ow. <laughs> How is everyone doing? Who is everybody? Is, 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 is everybody okay? That no, I'm not. <clears throat> I'm just going to lay here. I slowly make my way off the roof. I took, I've got bruises farming already. I Can I just buy-in. pat Mally on the shoulder? There, there. I'm gonna lay there. Can, can I help you up? No, my negative just, one strength modifier. I'm just gonna stay here for a while. Okay. As track will wander up to Mally, who I assume is still shifted. No, that took oh. me straight out of shifted once okay. the temp HP is gone. Never mind then. Uh, Mally is just covered in blood. <laughs> Mostly her own. Actually, I'll, 100% her own. I'll pull out the little handkerchief and, 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 and I'll just pat. <laughs> I would like to utter the word fuck as some of my bruises heal up a bit. As I cast healing word. That is the traditional verbal component to healing word. Um, is the street still empty? Uh, yes. And are there any places, like, I guess, how close are we to the to the, the destination we were thinking we were going to? <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. And, um, and are there any, like, inns or taverns that we can see on this particular street? Not on this particular street. Um, you're not terribly far away from where to go and yeah there's probably something nearby i'd like to second wind for 12 no i'm level three yeah for 12 hp that's good that's good and i will get up and that smile will be back and i'm gonna loop my new bola over my shoulder all right i'm ready to go this track is not can we get a no. drink or something? Let's have a sit. Yeah, let's, let's. Yeah, I'm all for sitting. That's that sounds wonderful. I'm, I'm gonna help Barks up, and maybe hand Barks like a lime. I I don't I don't have anything else to do. I didn't into it and assert your dominance. <laughs> when when you reach down to to like offer me a hand, I swat it away and I'll just kind of push myself up. I'm fine. You sure, Nippy? <coughs> and uh, I've got the grossest smear of blood in my hand. I I offer my hands up for a hug. Not right now. And I'll just stand up and hobble over to where the rest of the folks are. And uh I'll turn around and say, I'll take that line, though. I will toss it. And I just bite into it. And hold it in my teeth. Sure. You have a line. It's pretty good. Lane is just going to turn in any direction that isn't facing all of this blood. Uh... Uh, so are we going back, or...? This, this, this cobalt thinks we should find a tavern and, and sit for a little bit, and then continue. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's... I mean, we can always go back and try to get that feather. We're taking a break. No, no, no. Feather, feather stays with kind merchant. Mm, does any place look comfy? I mean, I just want to get off you could you could go, yeah, you could, like, look around and find, like, a little tavern or something if you'd like. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Okay. Uh, it takes a few minutes, but not, not too difficult over on this side of town. Do I see any people on my way? You start to see a few people. Okay. Slowly but surely, you're back to the places where people are, for whatever reason. Well, uh, that sounds complicated, and Mally's not going to know anything about that. Death track is definitely, um, I'm, I'm definitely keeping to, like, 
cover as we're moving until I start to see people again. And then I'll kind of rejoin the group. <laughs> okay. Do y'all want to take a short rest in the tavern? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yes, please. Please. <laughs> sure. You find your way uh, to the Bearded Drake. It's a nice little tavern on the side of town. Large benches. It's actually known for a place where people just kind of chill. Um, the food's okay, but it's comfy, and they don't really care if you're there for a while. So, yeah, it's a good spot. Find a seat. Yeah, it's order just a drink. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Nope, I'm good. Right. Eat drink. a banana. So, wow. um, <clears throat> what, 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 what was that? Um, it was stupid elves. What? What? It, it's stupid elves. They they pay way too much for my very good, very effective fortune telling. Would you like fortune told? <gasps> yes. Oh, that, 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 would, that would be wonderful. They were also ah, yes, yes. Yes, five at gold. the temple. Oh, yeah, did one of them stab me? They were also at the temple, and they were following us after we left the singer's lounge. They stole the key, and also, fortune-telling sounds pretty good. Wait, you told their fortune? <laughs> what <Yes>. was it? <laughs> ah, it was, was very good. Yeah, I don't remember what it was either. <laughs> <laughs> like kick the crap out of us good? It did not involve us. It was involving ventures. Things run away from, things stolen. Saw them coming out of temple. They stole things from the temple? Probably. I did not see them steal it, but... Yes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 then, and then why did they attack us? Don't know. They wanted me to do some work for them. Perhaps they're not happy that I am not doing work for them. And honestly, if you spend more <clears throat> time with rinks over here, you'd probably want to attack them in the street, too. He's not wrong. It's not wrong. I think he's a little wrong. Rinks is occasionally occasionally tolerable. Oh. Uh, very, very well. So, oh. what do you... Uh, 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 sh sure. It's five gold. Are you sure you can't do it for three? Yes, can do for three. Okay. Slide three gold over. Take three gold and start to kind of like make some motions with my hands and the beetles will start to kind of like pop out onto the table and start to move around into various patterns. This cobalt see many good things. See Goipnik treat well. See what? what? See what what? What what did you say? What did, what did, many, what did they say? Many yes. good things. The the the, the Goipnik. The, the go oh the Goipnik. Yes. They treat well. Uh uh the success in our Um uh yes, is fortune. What about love? Daz. Ah, yes, much love. Daz, make an arcana test. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna use one of my advantages. That's much better. Um that's a 17. As you're sort of mumbling through this, you know that occasionally when you've told people fortunes, they do they do get a glimpse of something. And for the briefest moment, briefest moment, you see... You don't actually see anything. You, you get a feeling. Back when you were with your, your clan, you remember that there was a time where you were studying with the swarm keepers, you know, trying to learn what they do, because that was what you were trying to be, uh, and you accidentally destroyed a hive. Um, and you were scolded for it, and it was this big problem. 
Uh, but you spent some time and you rebuilt the hive. Maybe not as good as it should have been, but you rebuilt it. And you were forgiven. And that feeling that you, you had of that sort of redemption that you earned, that's what you feel very suddenly as, as you're looking at Lyra. And I feel this about her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This cobalt thinks you will... You have redeemed... You have redeemed yourself. I'm... I'm sorry. D Daz, what, what did you say? You have... You have redeemed yourself. Have I? That is... That is what the Beatles tell me. Wow. Uh, where, where did you learn to, to do such a... Such a thing as this? Is part of my clan. Have you, have you seen any grass seas? Any what? Grass seas, seas of grass. What grass seas? Dungeon master. Make a history check. Also, Daz, do you want to be reminded what fortune you gave the elves? Sure. Or, <laughs> uh, let's see. Is that history? Yes. 26. Awesome. Specifically, you said, ah, mm hmm, thwarted you have been. A door unopened, but a key found. Uh, uh, yes. Yes! The hidden door behind a statue. One that is short and on the right. I see the number four. Right. Okay. Yeah. The advantage of having a text based game. <laughs> um, 24. Okay. Uh, 26. 26, my bad. I have a plus nine. Um, yeah, being a level 10 character, you would. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the term grass sea is an interesting one. There is a low portion of this continent, north of here, um, in the... I forget what the northern kingdom is called now. In the northern kingdom. Um... Because you have the jungle that's down here, and then there's, like, this... The the land sort of goes down very low, and then it's up into the mountains in the far north. But in that low area in between is this massive grassland. That's... And it, it, it sometimes it's called the Grass Sea, because it used to be underwater the, as the oceans pulled back that area. So there's all sorts of weird stuff buried in the earth there. That? But it's huge. It's like thousands of square miles. So, I mean, yeah. You've heard of it. I, I, I've, I've heard of it. Um, I'm from I'm from a town up north. Ah. I'll scrounge around and pull out my crudely made map and plop it down. Work on map. You need, you need help on your map? Yes, please mark it on the map. Where I am from or the grass sea? The grass sea. That is where I am from. It takes you a second to sort of piece together this map that Daz tried. And maybe it looks like a few other hands have marked on this before. Um, there is an area that seems to be circled that you, you kind of put together. You think that's where this grass sea is supposed to be based on his drawing of the continent? I'll, I'll draw it in. And then I'll put a little a little house where I live. Lyra's home. Yes, yes, good. I come to home. Roll up. My Maybe nosy. So pleased. Of course. Can I be nosy and see if there's anything on the map that I don't have on mine? Oh lord. Uh. Yes. Make a perception test. Send it to me. <laughs> And okay, I, when fair. I finish making your map, I will update it for maybe what you found. Because I have not finished that yet. Thank you. Thank you. You helped me get home. And I will roll up my map, put it away. Daz track. Mm -hmm. After you tell this fortune and you like, pull out the map and whatnot, uh, an elderly dwarven man walks over to you. You tell fortunes. 
Yes, this combat has fortunes. I would be very interested to hear what you have to say. Right. It's five gold. I don't have any gold. But I think crafty young man such as yourself find some benefit. He pulls out a rapier and sets it down. I'm a bit old now. I I think this might be a boon to you. Gaztrak's eyes definitely go a little wide and he touches the rapier. Yes. Yes. Yes, it would. I tell your fortune. Um, and I think Daztrak is actually going to try and tell a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Daztrak gives a shit. Uh, <laughs> make another Arcana test, then, if you're really gonna try. Okay. Um, we'll go with that. Uh, that's a 13. Okay. You see... It's, uh, it's smoke, but it's not... There's no panic. There's no... In fact, it feels like accomplishment. It's, it's not even the normal right blackish gray color. It's, it's some sort of golden color. Let's save my burrito for my cat. Um, yeah, goldenish smoke and accomplishment. Okay. Uh, I'll have my beetles kind of swarming a little bit and uh, a lot of the beetles will kind of turn from their iridescent color to gold. And um, I will see, I see, I see a, I see a golden mist of accomplishment. You will, Moradin will receive you well. You will, you will find his house in good time. There is a well done miss. You will achieve a a good thing. You see tears start to scroll down his face. That is the best news I've heard all day. <laughs> that rapier does one moment and goes to a back room and is gone for a few minutes. I'll come back to him in just a second. The fortunes that Daz has been doing, mm -hmm. can I tell if there's actually any merit behind them? You could roll Insight, Religion, or Arcana. I'll roll Insight. Go for it. Uh, that's only a 14. Okay. You... There seems to be a genuine reaction people are giving, Daz, and... From what you can tell, he doesn't seem to know them. You're not sensing any real attempt at deceit. You're not attempting... You're not seeing any of those kinds of things. It's, it's hard to say. Maybe not now, Daz, but um, I would like one of your fortunes sometime. I think I would too, actually. Yes, yes. Yes, it's uh, five gold. I know what my fortune's gonna say. You talk too much. <laughs> I was gonna say, get hit every time we, I go out with all of you. Oh, yes, you make good distraction. 
you should you should get bigger armor so that when you you're jumping around uh, you don't get hurt as much you the the older dwarven man comes back and uh, I don't I don't think this will hit your fingers very well but um perhaps and points towards Elaine this this belonged to well belong to someone dear to me and I, I think one of you should have it and unfortunately it can't really be resized I, I think it would best fit you and it's this small little box thank you um I'll, I'll take good care of it and he just says thank you thank you thank you I, I have work to do like invigorated smile and some of the weariness kind of fades from his voice and he marches back towards the rooms that he was just in Dash you didn't see him like burning down an orphanage or anything did you was it like a is it like a good Ooh. thing he's doing or yeah, I just I, fortunes are unclear he's not okay. he's not he's not um okay I'm yes. not going to think about it anymore. Thank you. Very well could be burning down orphans. Would be strange for dwarves. Elaine, do you open the box? Yes. Inside is a small golden ring with a emerald um, small bird. It looks like a hummingbird, maybe. Uh, we'll say that happened towards the beginning of your uh, break here. So if you would like sure. to attune to this Ring of Evasion. I would very much like to do that. Thank you. You can You can do that. And I would also like to keep the box. Okay. <laughs> he did not say that he needed it back, so sounds fine. All right, Outlaws. What are we doing from here? Marks, what, this... what are we doing? Why do you ask Barks? I always ask Barks. Carries the brain cells. Why would she ask you? Why not? This cobalt is one that survives. Well, I mean, we're all still standing. Uh, <clears throat> I was going to finish my drink and then I was going to suggest we head to the shed, wherever the hell that is. Yes. Pardon surreptitious manner instead of down the street. And if street empties, we should probably run. I don't think yeah. we can take the street. Oh, you want to take sewers? I can take you sewers. No. I don't want to take the sewers. No, I don't. It's either. nice. It's cold. It's dark. Lots of beetles. You've described no. everything I don't like in one sentence. Thank you. Yeah, but if we don't want to run into them again, or if we think we're going to run into them again... I'd rather not us almost die again. Yes, would not like to die. Are not that bad. You'll live. Aren't there things in the sewers? Like oozes? No, mostly kobolds. Well, kobolds seem nice. Daz, you have definitely not run into any other kobolds in the sewers. And I live in sewers. I know, I'm just saying there's not <laughs> other ones. <laughs> Um, take we, we, or we, not? We, we, we don't have to take sewers, but we should be stealth. Yes. To be fair, the streets didn't go so well, so maybe the sewers is a good idea. Let's just not be seen. Look, some of us are covered in hair. Do you know how long it takes to get stink out of hair? Yes. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying not to think about that either. How did you go, Bart? That's none of your business. Okay. Did you say cobalt? Cobalt? <laughs> oh. 
you guys begin heading towards the thing you're Is... supposed to be going towards. I'm, I'm gonna roll please. some hit dice, but yes. Sure. Yeah. Okay. In the name of Yandala, please. <laughs> you, uh, I'll roll stealth. Can I roll stealth? Yandala? No, but she's been doing me some good so far, so I'm not gonna argue. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Um. You all make your way down. Uh, are you rolling stealth? I am. Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Make the, and I'm gonna have, use a reroll on it. Y'all have several rerolls. Yep. Uh, so that's a nat twenty for a total of twenty three. Definitely rerolling. Hey, got... Maui. And I have disadvantage. Let's say. We're rolling stealth. So let's reroll this again. What are we rolling? You're rolling stealth. If okay. you want. Okay. You don't actually have to. That's an eight. <laughs> I got a twenty-two. Seventeen. Oh, eleven. Reroll. Sixteen. That's marginally better. That's um. That's a 13. Okay. Thankfully, the afternoon crowd seems to have returned to most of the streets. Um, but uh, y'all aren't just doing the best blending in with them. Some are better than others, and then some of you are Malian way. I forgot we were sneaking. Um, who has walked into two camels, three giant lizards, and one very, very, very confused Mastiff. Does the Mastiff want a banana? If you say banana, the Mastiff is interested, and then when you pull out a lemon, it leaves and huffs at you. Easy come, easy go. I put it back in, and I just keep walking. Okay. After a little bit of time, you pretty easily managed to make it to uh, the... Uh, the building. And it's pretty obvious when you get there, as, you know, one of the walls seems to have been ripped open. Um, there are scorch marks on the ground. Some that you expect from the acid that a few of you might recall. I immediately drink my potion of acid resistance. <laughs> How long does that last? An hour. Okay. Um, <laughs> And then, well, a few of you notice the Lyra specifically is going to notice the scorch marks that are from fire and lightning. Maybe a bit of odd moisture in certain spots from where maybe ice was, or clearly an arcane battle happened here. Um, there are a few uh, people kind of picking up and going through the debris and whatnot. Uh, they're kind of staying away from the building, though. They're just sort of cleaning up around in the streets. Well, this looks like the house. Yes. We yeah. should... Give it away. Is, is there anyone, like, you know, I mean, obviously modern day, there'd be, like, police tape or something sure. like that, but is there something akin to that it's, it's just a collapsed house there it's not even collapsed it's just a wall is missing there is a okay. sign on it that's written in common nobish common gnomish halfling elven orcish draconic and a language none of you recognize that makes um, sense i only speak common that's fair a language uh, none of us recognize guaranteed none of you recognize okay. it um <laughs> That uh, it says, you know, danger could collapse at any moment. Does it say the same thing in all those languages? Yes. Well, as many I... of those as you can read. One, two. I bet we know what the do, 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 do we have ten minutes? Sure. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna comprehend. I'm gonna originally cast comprehend languages. Okay. It says the same thing in every language, except you don't understand the last language. Okay, I'd like to um, copy it down. The last one? I'm just gonna... A spoken language. You also understand any written language that you see, but you must be touching the surface. That's fine. The spell doesn't decode secret messages in a text. Yep. The last one doesn't make any sense. The last one doesn't make a a any sense at all. 
could have told hmm. you that. Yeah, I mean, they all don't make sense except the first one, so I'm just gonna go inside and walk in. Are Mally, you sure? Uh, Mally, what the hell? Y'all read the sign. Be careful. This building could collapse at any moment, and I'm just gonna swagger in after Mally. And y'all are too cautious. Come on. I mean, I'm pretty sure they write that on all the signs of buildings. <laughs> it's true. Night. So. Uh, that's funny. Um, so, you all enter the building. But you don't just see a ton. It's, it's not a small building. It's, it's got some size to it. Um, there's a few rooms. They all seem open. A lot of debris. A lot of... Well, until recently, you wouldn't know what melted wood looks like. Uh, but there's some melted wood in here. Um, just a variety of very strange and destroyed things. Can I, while uh, Lyra was ritually casting Comprehend Languages, could I have ritually cast Detect Magic? Oh, certainly. And I'd like to keep that up as we wander through. Cool. Uh, as a note, um, the last set of text uh, was magical. Text is magical, by the way. What's the um, aura? Abjuration. Abjuration. I'd like to look for if there's any smuggling hatches in the house. Make an investigation check. What I... I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, please. What I understand that uh, Raja's text... Uh, kit texting. Casting... Com uh, wow. Would I understand that Raja is casting Detect Magic? Yes. Yeah, we'd say that you recognize that. Uh, uh, Ra Raja, what do you see? Text is magic. What kind? Abjuration. <gasps> oh, goody! So that's a 10, I'm gonna re-roll it. That's a 2, I'm gonna re-roll it. <laughs> uh, that's a 4. And that's all I got. <laughs> burning through those rerolls before you fight the next ooze. Um Okay. Uh yeah, you you find a lot of debris. Uh you keep thinking you find like secret hatches and you'll find like a door and you find a knob and you pull it and it's actually just a broken door that had been blown off a hinge somewhere. And then you set it down and then you walk off, you come back and you find the same door and you think it's a hatch and you try to open it and it's not. The third time I take the doorknob and I put it in my pack. Okay. Hey, there's a hatch that doesn't have a doorknob on it. And this continues for a bit. What are the rest of you doing? What what does it look like this house was before it was attacked? Maybe like a storehouse? There are a couple of rooms. You don't see any like bedding or anything like that. Um, a lot of destroyed furniture though. And there is a much larger open space. But other than that, I'm not sure. Okay. And do we see the hole where the ooze came through? You don't. You just see where it blew through the side of the building, but where it came from hmm. doesn't seem like any obvious spot. Silly question. Am I able to sniff out any rats or other critters that might be poking around here? Silly answer. Make a perception test. a re-roll on that. Oh, that's even worse. Um, I think I've got one left. Eh, what the hell. Let's just do it. Ah, oh, that's better. That's a 16 plus whatever my perception is. I think it's a 2. I think that's gonna be an 18. Yeah, it's an 18. Okay. Um. There is an odd smell. Coming from one of the back rooms. A smell. Yeah. Definitely. Not sure what it is, but it's... It's something. Hey, everyone. I smell something. Is Shut it a up smell? and listen. Is it a lime? No. Something... Acrid? No. Pungent. Well. That 
and I just trail off and I'll start pacing towards the room, sniffing the whole way. Sure, sure. <coughs> what are the rest of you doing? I'm just gonna follow Barks. It's probably a wise decision. Yeah, well, Mally's stealing door handles, apparently, and Barks is once again sniffling. Um, I'm probably gonna be walking around slowly with my detect magic and also just looking for anything suspicious, suspicious or anything that would be beneficial, you know, to get paid. Sure, sure, sure. I would like to go up to a person mm -hmm. not in my party. Um, you said there's people, like, picking up stuff, like yeah. cleaning? Yeah. Are there any human women? Mm, no. No, a lot of elves. A couple dwarves. Okay, whoever's closest to me or looks, if anyone looks like they're in charge, I'll take it, but otherwise I'll just go up to anybody. I'm not... Not anybody specific. Everybody just kind of seems to be going at their own pace. Uh, Nobody who looks like mean like Raja, but um, like Barkster or above. Nicer. Okay. Uh, you see there's an Arakokra that's smiling wide and sort of picking stuff up and seems like as happy as they can be hunting and pecking through this debris. Hi! Uh, hello. I don't mean to interrupt. I mean, I am interrupting, so I'm sorry for that. But, um, I was wondering, uh, have you been here long? I'm sort of looking for somebody and was wondering, uh, well, if, if you might be able to help me. Well, I say, I live right around here, so I might be able to help. Who That's are you wonderful. looking for? Thank you so much. Um... Well, I'm I'm sort of curious about uh, this whole ooze incident. Um, what a nightmare, am I right? Oh, indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, specifically, as far as people go, um, well, I'm wondering, like, where maybe the ooze went, or where it came from, or what happened to it. But also, uh, Kadia, 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 yeah. Um, uh, if, if you've seen her maybe lately, or know maybe where she's gone, or, um, anything? Now, there was a woman who was living over there. Now, I haven't seen her in a few days. Hmm. Maybe a day. I don't really pay attention to other people's business. Oh, no. Now. Am I nearby when she's having this conversation so I can eavesdrop. You went into the building? Oh, okay, this is and, outside. Yeah, this is outside. Okay. She's talking to the people picking through the debris. Well, uh, hmm. The ooze that came from yonder hole. We don't normally build buildings like that. No, seems unwise. Like, I'm not no. really a city person, but I've only why would you do that? recently come here myself. But, I agree, it does not seem like it would be very weatherproof. Now, I can't say that I recall seeing anyone, but I keep an eye out. Hey, thanks. You just come around here and you ask for me anytime. They all sure. know me around here. What's your name? They call me Foggy. That's an excellent name. I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm a Leon. Leon, is it a pleasure? He goes okay, back thanks. To, to picking through. Um, she'll she'll head inside at that point. Okay. Um, Raja, I believe you were you were looking for stuff. You want to make a perception or an investigation test? I would, and thank you for Eva for reminding me. If there is any clues to this woman, I would also like to keep an eye out for that as well. That's probably going to be an investigation test, then. Um, I'm going to use an advantage. You have several, so go for it. Use an advantage. You still have several, so go for it. Okay, that's 
better, and I don't want to use another one, so I'm going to assume it'd be a 15. Okay. As you're looking around, one thing that you notice is that the, the debris doesn't make sense. If the cube came out, and y'all were there when a cube burst through the side of a building, it burst outward, along with all the stuff that it didn't dissolve. There's way too much stuff here that's solid, and way too much rubble on the inside of the building. And is there any um, indication, you know, like ooze debris and slime? <laughs> No, but uh, if you recall from the speech given um, in the square earlier, they, they had mentioned that they were cleaning up a lot of that, okay. so it's possible they've already come through here. Hmm. I'll take that until we reconvene. Okay. Daz Track, what are you doing? I think I would have just been following uh, Barkst and Maui. Okay. Make... What's your passive investigation? My passive investigation is... A question DMs never ask. Yeah. Is 11. <laughs> it's 11. What is your proficiency modifier? It's a 2 or 3? For intelligence? Or no, just regular? Your, yeah, just your proficiency modifier. modifier. Yeah, yeah uh, plus 2. Plus 2. Okay. So, as a kobold... And that's someone that lived in the side of a mountain. Um, you're looking around, and a few things kind of click for you. If you made a tunnel, and you didn't want someone to find it, making it look like the tunnel had collapsed, always a great thing to do. And all of this crap that's in here, Maybe it was put here. Hmm. Do I get an idea? So the, it's all it's all the all the debris is like it seems to be in like a line or it seems to just be piled in strange places. Uh, specifically okay. in this room as you enter with Barkston Maui, uh, off to the left against one of the walls, it looks like. Things were just kind of thrown that way as they broke, but maybe they were stacked. I'll I'll go over to some of those those stacks and just kind of start poking poking around, seeing if I can't get an idea of where there might be something. Okay. Uh, Lyra, what you doing? Um, just looking at things and, 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 um, trying to look for magic. Okay, okay. Mally, you... Distracted. That's fair. Barks and Mally, you notice Daz Track start, like, poking at the junk over off on the other wall. By hey. the way, did I notice any magic? Besides Not the inside. Not once you get inside, no. Um, as track, what you doing? Scaly, yeah. be, be careful. If you poke around too much, it's gonna fall on you. Hmm, I don't think so. This is. It's not collapsed. Is placed. So, are you looking to move it? Perhaps. This cobalt thinks this is maybe where Tunnel is. All right. Um, I'm gonna help move it, because okay. moving things and being strong is what Mally does. Okay. After a few seconds of moving, um, sure enough, Barks, as they begin moving some of this debris, the smell gets stronger. Oh. And after a couple of seconds, <laughs> uh, it's not huge, but a um, little tunnel downward emerges. There what do you smell? Well, whatever it is, you sure as heck figured out where it's coming from. Yes. How, 
How big is the hole? Big enough for you all. It, it, it's downward, but it slopes. So, like, you could kind of crab walk or, you know, crawl down it. Walk upright, my full kobold glory of two feet. Yes. You are a, <laughs> you are a glorious kobold. Um, the smell, Bart, as, as it becomes more present and clearer, it definitely smells like something is being burned. But something with like heavy amount of odor. Well, whoever's making that smell is probably not going to be happy to see us. So I say we gather up the rest of the boats and take a little tunnel trip. Yes, this cobalt likes tunnels. That sounds great. So excited to go down somewhere. It's, it's always nice to go down in tight tunnel. You all join Daz Track happily marching into the tunnel. Yep. It's like someone Do I found something. Hear anything? I'll, I'll motion for. Like aside from Daz? No. Not anything specific. They were trying to hide this. We busted in, not out. I don't think it was actually gelatinous cubes. As you all go down the tunnel, the walls, the ceiling, and the floor, they're all incredibly smooth. Like, you can still find purchase, and you can still crawl, but it's, there's no real roughness to it at all. Having dug a lot of tunnels, uh -huh. is there anything I may have been told over the years that would cause a tunnel like this? The only time a smooth tunnel is is something you encounter is when a creature that digs with its whole body comes through. Because then you're not really dealing with claws, there's no teeth or whatever, you're just dealing with the force of pressure. And so it tends to be smooth because there's no disruption, it's no, no, no like side disruption, it's all forward. Those of you that were eaten by the cube. I believe that was Raja, Mali, Elaine? I, think. I don't think I was consumed. Uh, I was well, definitely in it. You were in, well, okay, you didn't get, none of you got consumed by the cube, but all of you were in, uh, the three of you were inside the cube for a little bit. We touched it, at, yeah, we all at least touched yeah, it. Yeah, I practically lived there. <laughs> and engulfed is a better word. Engulfed. I was not engulfed. That's fair. Um, there is a faint smell all along the walls of this tunnel that's exactly like that it's it's decayed enough to not just make you start to retch but yeah yeah it's there i'm gonna chew on like a lime or something that has a strong taste i vomit I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. It's fine. Here, have a lime. I help. Thank, thank you. He hands you a kiwi. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. Hey, you know, I'll roll with it. <laughs> and kiwis are citrus. Fair. As you go down. Barks, the smell is getting stronger. The the burning smell. You come to a very still cavern. It sort of opens up in front of you. Um, it's it's huge. You're not sure how far under the city you are, but you must be a pretty good way. Raja, the last time you saw a cavern like this in this town uh, was in the necropolis. But I think it's um, maybe connected to the necropolis. This is on the other side of the river from it. So maybe 
but oh. certainly not close. Like, it would take a while. If right. you could find a cave network, it would take a while to navigate that way. But it's a possibility because it is around, under the entire city. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. You do know pretty specifically that the necropolis uh, was uh, found and not created by the temple. Okay. So even if um, even if it was, there's always the possibility that they might not know of this area. Yeah, you've not ever really looked in. <laughs> The I geography and yeah, the bill, the <laughs> the the property management side of the Raven Queen's Temple is even less important to you than the actual worship of the Raven Queen. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, big cavern, horrible stench. Do we? Yeah, Did we, we complete any... what we were here to do? Tell me, what have we learned? That there's a thing underneath the house? To be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. I'm not surprised. Do we see any... Like, Barks has been describing like an acrid, like, burning smell. Like, is there sign of smoke? Like, is there fire in the distance? Can we see it in this dark cave or make a perception test re-roll that uh, that's not very good either um, yeah why not we'll re-roll that one again there we go that's better my perception is oh my perception is dirty 20 so you don't immediately see anything but off you're in your element now. You do notice that off on one of the far sides, there is a smaller tunnel that kind of branches out. And there's a little bit of light coming out of that tunnel. It's probably... It's probably... Uh, geez. Um, why did I invite Camille into a game where there are hidden tunnels? Um, I'm just going to hear that song for the next month. Uh, geez. It's probably about 70 feet away from where you all are now. Okay. Um, is, is, is lights over there? Very dim. How big is the tunnel? Like, smaller or larger than the one we just came through? Who has dark vision? Does it have a range on it? 60. 60? Hard to say. Am I able to get a sense of what direction of the city it goes towards? Ooh. Not a question I thought I would have to answer. Um, it is pointed towards Averine Square. It's towards the square... This cobalt goes investigates. Does anyone mind if I get a torch? Yes. You want to hold my hand? No, it's just sort of the oppressive darkness is sort of oppressive. I mean, you can think of it as like as if your eyes are shut really tight. Daz, I'll go with you to investigate. I don't want to be around if a torch is lit. Okay. We go quiet. We go quiet. Okay. Everybody roll me stealth. Looting torch crew. Yeah, everybody, if you want to be stealthy. 23. Pretty well, A 7. As you're walking, take a few steps in. Mally, you're thinking, you know what? If I take a few steps over this way, maybe I won't knock into anybody else and it'll, it'll help. 
Which, you know, sounds like it would be such a great idea. Until you step on something that pops up and hits you in the shin. Right at the spot where, like, your sabaton meets, uh, where, like, your, uh, your grief should be, or not grief, your, uh, why can I never remember the tacit, where your tacit would hang down. Um, so it's, like, right on the side of the, like, the shin knee, upper knee, or lower knee area. And it's a shield. It's a shield? You, you stepped onto a shield. Uh, I'll pick it up and hope it's not a mimic. God, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> take in that. No, it does not seem to be a mimic. Though you are noticing it kind of has some similar patterning to your, uh, your sword. Well, oh gosh. Um, I'm going to poke it with a sword. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it has similar patterns. I love that number. Um, tang, 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 tang. Seems to be made of some kind of metal. Hmm. A metal shield. Wow. As you do, you pick it up. Yeah, I'll pick it up. You pick it up, and you notice that. While it has a similar styling to your sword, it looks like it's, like, broken. And it's, like, it's cracked. It's not broken all the way through. Like, it, you could still hold it and whatnot, but, like, there's some cracks that run across it, and there's some obvious, like, bends and dents. It's it's definitely seen some hurt. I'll hold on to it, I guess. Is Raja still near me? I yeeted with Daz. No, yeah, okay. Raja, Raja has some extra movement. Okay, I'm just gonna sit down. Um, I'm not very sneaky, and I'm gonna ruin it, so I'm just gonna sit right here. Okay. Um, Manny, I, I, I'm, I mm. believe in you. I, I think you can do this. I don't. I, I do believe, believe in the me that, that believes in you. Please. Um. P pretty please. Last time I believed in myself, and I got hit in the face, and immediately went passed out, and then I got absorbed into an ooze, and then people tried to rescue me and they got absorbed in the ooze and then today i got hit twice but mally look at you you're still standing here yeah well i'm sitting sitting here we could be standing if we wanted to but i'm, I'm just saying you're still alive you still have another chance you can do this <sighs> come on for me. Okay, but that's only because we're friends. Of course. As you two are having this conversation, Raja and Dazra, you get to the cave. Uh, Barks, uh, and I'm gonna say it wrong again, and it's bothering me now. Alayan. Alayan, jeez. Barks and Alayan. What are you two doing? I rolled a 10 on my stealth, okay. so not, nailing it. Not the stealthiest, but... I'm... Well, I'm wheezing all the time, so that doesn't help. Okay. Did, did you light your torch, Elaine? I did, and I assume we're together. You said you don't have dark vision either, right? I do. Oh. You're the only one. <laughs> okay, I'm alone in the dark with a torch. This is absolutely fine. Played the lone human in the party of loops. <laughs> uh, okay. They're a little bit behind you, Raja and Daz. You get to the cave entrance, and inside you hear something. It's a voice. Do either of you speak abyssal? No. There's a there's a chanting that's happening. You don't understand the language. And you can definitely smell whatever this this thing is. What do you do? Can we... I guess, so, dark vision of 60 feet, can we see anything in here? The smaller or? tunnel kind of goes and curves in. So there's okay. definitely light coming from here, and there's definitely chanting, and there's definitely some kind of smell. How big okay. is the tunnel? It's like 
five feet across. It's so it can fit a medium size. Yeah. Human race. Okay. Mm, I don't like that. Well, we can do something about it, or we can just go. I think we have enough for Kubnik. what's going on but I don't think we have enough information to get paid there is hole underneath house go yeah. there but they're gonna ask why this is very hush <laughs> this is very hush by the I way I assumed so <laughs> but they're gonna ask why and then we won't what? have an answer we were not paid for that answer hmm. but I am curious perhaps I peek around the corner Am I able to get a sense if Daz track is much stealthier than me, or if we're kind of like on par? You guys are probably pretty similar. However, in this environment, he seems very comfortable. Hmm. You want to get close? Be my guest. All right, this cobalt, he returns. Stop. Wait. And I will cast a spell on you. There is a light, dark shimmer that encompasses you. And you have a plus two bonus to your AC. Ooh. Thank you. I will sneak forward and see if I can't get close enough to see what's going on without being seen. Okay. Make a stealth roll. Uh, 16. Okay. forward, taking every care to step lightly, to avoid any loose earth, to be very in control. You round the corner, and you can see into this room. There is light in here. It's not a ton, but there is a little bit of light. There seems to be four large standing uh, uh, Stands, or whatever, whatever. They're four, like, five-foot-tall metal stands. They have candles on top of them burning. In the center, there is this faint purple glow on the ground. And a woman standing in the center. Her head is down. She's looking into a book. There's a quiver and an air, a bow on her back. She's the chant. You don't recognize the language, but what you do recognize is it's there's a chant, and then uh, th there's a hesitation, and then it keeps going, and then a hesitation, it keeps going. This person, you just feel how nervous they are. And that's what you see. Okay, I will get back to Raja. Lyra and, so and, I, and, so, and so I, I only see the one person. Lyra and Mal, you get you get to the group at this point. There is one woman with a bow and a quiver on her back. Seems to be summoning something, or chanting, or not sure. So, but... I, I mean, what do you want us to do about it, though? Are we supposed to fight her? I mean, Raja was prepared to fight me for less, so probably. Um, go. I would like to sneak forward as soon as Daz Track tells me that. Okay. Wolf Dell. I I should probably go in last. I'm really not sneaky. I was just gonna sprint in and attack. I'm gonna put out the torch. By the way, if I'm close I'm enough gonna to see the light. Ooh, I'm gonna use an advantage, please. One second. Okay. Um. Uh, but um, is there anything I should do? Hold on. I'll fix it in a second. Hold on. 
Um, that is a 24. Okay. You also sneak forward. And you see the same thing. I would like to study her face, what she is wearing, and commit everything I can to memory, please. Okay. Um, and can I get a sense of, like, her power it's along hard, those lines? It's hard to say. What you do know is that you, you've seen a variety of rituals. Let's pull it back like this. There we go. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> you've seen a variety of rituals. The when you look in you actually can tell the candles aren't just candles they're they're burning some strange kind of incense uh this to you feels much more like a religious ritual than it does an arcane one are there any exits uh that you can see from here aside from the one you're standing in how big is the room from what you can tell uh, i mean far wall looks 40 feet away from where like this tunnel opens up into this larger room you can't really see either of the sides and she's about 40 feet away she's about 30 feet away you got about another 10 feet of the smaller tunnel and then she's about in the center of the room so she's about 20 feet in and then 20 feet past that is the wall I would like to Attack her. With what? I have a longbow and a bonus action that I would like to use. Roll that beautiful beam footage. Um, so I will attack with my longbow as well as um, spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, you have advantage on the longbow attack. I'm sorry, uh, crossbow. You have advantage on the crossbow attack. I'll do that first. I'd like to use an advantage on that. <laughs> I rolled a one and a two, okay? Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, you have them. Go for it. Okay, that is a 21. You hit. Roll damage. That is seven. Okay. And then uh, the spiritual weapon. All right. As the bolt sinks into her shoulder, the chanting doesn't stop. She doesn't move. She doesn't cry out. But she does look. And she turns. She continues to chant. Make your, uh, summon your spiritual weapon and make your roll. Let's use another advantage. Uh, it was a not high enough, I think. That's a 13. <laughs> No, no. Uh, as the spiritual weapon, the scimitar tries to come down, she simply like leans slightly and it slashes harmly in front of her. And I'm just staring at her. I need everyone to roll initiative now. Well, I'm going to use one of my three re rolls to re roll my initiative. Okay, 20 to 25. Parks, is that a 25 or did you just get a 5? Five? 5, jeez. Okay, uh, 15 to 20. Lyra, what'd you get? 15. 15? Uh, El Elian. Elian? I'm never gonna get this right. Elian? <laughs> Uh, 18. Lay in, uh, lay in, uh, lay in. Gonna get it right. Mally. 16. Okay. And then our good buddy Daz. <laughs> Two? Yes. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. It would be six because I rolled a two. Okay. <laughs> I got a 13. I, I think way. I already had yours, my bad. I would have noticed that here in a second. Crap. Okay, cool. Uh, the surprise round is over. 
Alayan, it's your turn. I would like to, um... Can I see this from where our group is, or is it around the corner? You, so you, what you all see is Raja walk up, peer around the corner, grab a crossbow, fire, and then do an incantation, and magic flies yeah, no. into the room. Catching up, then. Um, and I would like to Hunter's Mark that bitch. Okay, she is marked. Uh, and then I, I would like to shoot her with my bolt. Yeah, go for it. Okay. That's 17. Uh, 17 will not hit. Is it? Flies past. Okay. Uh, Mally. How far away is she? So, Raja went in a love, it's like 40 feet. Okay, I'm gonna move 30 feet in. Okay. And bonus action, Paragon's Edict. And then I'm gonna action surge, so dash, what close do you distance. say for your edict? Play fucklehead! <laughs> Mally's here! Fight me! Oh, man. It's always and great to see how the first time your homebrew gets used. Uh. So, then I will close the distance and I'll make one attack with my Katar. Okay, go for it. Uh, does a 19 hit? A 19 is a glancing blow. Alright, so that is half damage. damage, right? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, that is a total of... I'm just going to roll on D&D &D Beyond because I'm lazy. Uh, so that's five damage. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Again, does not move. Let's see. That's fair. Libra, it's your turn. Um, 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 banishment. <laughs> what kind of save is that? Um... Charisma. Okay. What's the DC? 17. Huh. I'm gonna burn on my crits. Money bitch! Like, I got legendary resistances. <laughs> yeah, I've got like three crits now, so might as well. Um. So that was my action. Um. Bonus action. Um. Nothing. <laughs> That's all I've got. Hide. Okay. Uh, Raja. Um, you said she's about thirty feet away with like incense burning and stuff. Mhm. Mm what I would like to do is I would like to slowly stalk up to her, and as I am like deadpan at her, I would like to just very coldly say I curse you and I don't think anything visually happens but it's like a coldness settling into someone's chest oh you're using it yeah oh cool I was like what ability is this <laughs> um, won't come into play unless she does something but I won't forget this time um, and I would like to shoot her again Okay, go With for it. With the crossbow. Yeah. I'm going to use an advantage. Uh, I'm going to use another advantage. Because fuck her. There we go. Well, that's a 23. Okay, 23 will hit. Okay, I'm going to drop my die. That is 9 damage. And can I, like, casually, like, kick an incense over with my foot as I'm walking towards her? You can try. Okay, that's fine. Uh, as you try to kick one over, it seems incredibly heavy. Okay. Uh, your arrow flies, and it hits, and it, like, pierces across her hand, but she, like, waves it away so it doesn't actually, like, stick into her at all. 
Um, that makes it her turn. Her eyes glow purple, and the runes on the ground glow as well. And three blue tendrils rise up. And they make attacks against Maui and Raja. Who else moved into the room? It hasn't been Daz's turn yet. So just Maui and Raja. Would this trigger the edict as it's targeting more than just me? Uh, it has to. It has to at least target you. Oh, okay. Yeah. If it doesn't target you at all, that's the that's the trigger. Um, I need the I need Raja and Maui. We'll save you two for now. Uh, I need you to make Constitution saving throws. I'm gonna burn a reroll. Nineteen. <laughs> Nineteen. Okay. Okay, that's a twenty-two. Okay. Uh, you both take. Four poison damage. As, uh, they the tendrils are like swinging at you, but they don't seem to try to hit you. They're trying to get near you, and this sickening odor is coming off of them as they do. It turns you a bit, but you both manage to stay resolute. Uh, then, with she has one hand on the book, with another hand she pulls out this large chain covered in spikes and swings it at Mally. I'm gonna burn a crit. Uh, okay, that doesn't do any crit damage because I'm immune, and it's a glancing blow because of my shield. Well, because it's 20, is my AC. Well, she has a bonus. Oh, yeah, yeah. darn it! <laughs> so it's not a glancing blow. It is a 20, and your, your adamantine plate does uh, negate the crit bonus of that. Uh, however, um... Okay, hurt me, daddy. Yeah, you're still... <laughs> you're, you're still... Going to take oh that's so lame I rolled a one um you're still gonna take six piercing damage okie dokie uh, and that will be her turn which now that makes it whose turn is it uh Barkst that's me all right so everybody decided they wanted to make a whole shitload of commo commotion in the middle of this tiny dark corridor so god damn it Maui um and also rinks I guess um I will draw my hefty new crossbow because bitchin and I will bonus you said they're 40 feet-ish away uh, did you move into the room or where are you exactly I I'm still outside the room okay so you have to go into the hall a little bit they're about 30 mm -hmm. feet away from where you can first see them. Oh, great. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll just run up with my move. Mm -hmm. And I have a bonus action. What can I do with that bonus action? I'm a rogue. Of course there's stuff I can do with that. But probably nothing I actually want to do with it. Sorry, though. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot and call it a day. Okay. Uh, you do have an ally in melee. Mm -hmm. Which... So you're aware. Which means I might hit my friend. Uh, which means you might do sneak attack. If you hit. Yeah. Oh, even better. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I like that. So, uh... As you level your new crossbow to fire, it glows very lightly and just at the, at the, at the tip of the weapon, um, but a, a yellowish glow comes across it. I'm using a reroll because that was bad. Okay. Okay, that's better. Um, 22? 22 will hit. Yeah. All right. Let's roll some sweet... Damage. Roll that regular damage and throw an extra D8 on top of it. As wow. as it strikes, lightning arcs through her body. Wow. Okay. Um, that's 13 from the bolt. Mm -hmm. 
sticks from the lightning. And then some sneak attack damage. Okay. Is three from the sneak attack. Okay. So, a whole bunch. And with that, I moved, I shot. Um, I think I'm done. Okay, Dev, it's your turn. Cool. Uh, so I have 30 feet, feet of movement. Can I actually close with them? She's about 40 feet away from, okay. from where the group originally was. So uh, free action, I'll take my sword out, uh, my new pretty rapier. Um, and as a bonus action, as I'm running in, I'll be just kind of uh, thumping my chest and starting to give a very high-pitched little cobalt battle cry, um, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to break my microphone <laughs> or anybody else's ears. Um, and uh, then as my action, I'm going to like reach up to this swarm that's starting to kind of billow out for me and pull some down and thrust it uh, forward. And I'm going to cast, um, yeah, I'm going to cast uh, Fairy Fire. Oh, what's that save? Uh, deck save. I'm gonna burn a crit. Okay. I think that's my last one. Are the tendrils uh, separate things, or is it part of her? Don't know. Okay. Plug around and find out. Well, they didn't. They don't. They didn't make. They're coming up from it's... the ground. Okay. Where she has this runic circle made. Okay. And how big is the circle that she's kind of in? Uh, it's about ten feet diameter. Okay. Cool. Um. And I guess that's my turn. As I cannot get to her. I will be getting to her next turn. Okay. That is going to bring us back around to Alayan. Are we doing three advantages to a crit rule for this? Sure. I would like to crit her. Okay. With my bow. Do it. Okay. Uh, also... Does Colossus Slayer stack with um, Hunter's Mark? Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't see why I don't it know why it wouldn't, but I wanted to ask before I Go for it. roll a lot of dice. Roll them beautiful bean footage. And since you're critting, throw a little flavor on it. How are you doing this? Um, so it's 15, and I just want to... Um, uh, just did you say she has a book in her hand yep in her left hand can i hit her hand sure Is that too much sure go for it yes. uh, got a crit yeah I, I would like i would like to do that very much just like right in her wrist part the arrow goes straight through her wrist she doesn't move man that is yikes Is that your turn? Yes, it is. I'm going to stay where I am. Mally, your turn. I'd like to hit the book with my sword. Okay. And I'd like to exchange three rerolls for an autocrit. Okay. As That's you, a 27 to hit? <laughs> as you bring your, your your scimitar, right? Your black blade. Uh, no, it is a... Blade. No, it changed. That's what it used to be. It is currently a Herald of the Infinite is currently a red Qatar with an antler handle and arm guard, I believe. That's what it started as. Oh, it yes, and it's a scimitar. scimitar. Okay, yes. So it's currently the it black is... bladed scimitar with the horn. Yes. Handle. Right, okay. Yes. As you bring it down, there's this <laughs> ringing that goes out. The book appears to be made of some kind of metal, and it doesn't move out of her hand. Well, that was great. Um, I guess I bonus action shift? Go for it. Okay, then I do it. Okay. I, I'll take that 5 HP and do nothing else. Lyra. 
as you've been watching this exchange happen, you have studied a great number of extraplanar entities and rituals and whatnot. This is clearly some kind of summoning. You still have comprehend languages up, because it's only it hasn't been ten minutes yet. She is definitely speaking abyssal. Um, now, what she's saying doesn't make a ton of sense, uh, but it's something like the pact has been honored implore your blessing finish the transformation is really all she keeps saying and you recognize that while yes this group of adventurers that you've been paired with they're doing damage she's just not physically responding to any of it and you've read about creatures like this creatures that have imparted pieces of their souls into something else as a way to escape death you're familiar with what a lich is. Now, clearly, hasn't gone full lich yet. But you're starting to wonder if that's what this ritual is. Do I, I get the sense that if they kill this person, they will become a lich? Hard to say where in the ritual they are. Is there, is there something I can do to the ritual circle to disrupt it? If I cause damage to the circle, or if I... You can is this... certainly try. Do I, I, I don't get the sense that uh, damage... As an abjurationist, yes. You get the sense that if you can disrupt this circle somehow, um, you can. Usually, uh, the ritual to transform into a lich is based on life and death. But she's not communicating with the Shadowfell. She's not communicating with any of like those afterlife. She's communicating with the Abyss. And the, the entities that are coming forward are these spectral ooze tendrils. Something is off about this. It's not life and death that she's messing with, but you're not sure what exactly it is. <coughs> um, so I, I, I don't get the sense that she can be killed right now. You're not sure. Fuck, immolation, fifth level! <sighs> Jeez, what is... Okay, is that a save or an attack? Dex save. I'm out of crits. Ah. Thirteen. Failure. On a failed save, um, eight d six fire damage on a failed save. On a failed save, the the target also burns for the spell's duration. The burning target sheds bright light in thirty foot radius and dim light an additional thirty feet. At the end of each of its turn, it must repeat the saving throw. It takes forty six fire damage on a failed save, and the spell ends on a success successful one. Uh, if it, if it, if damage from this spell kills the target, target is turned to ash. That's a spicy meatball. Um, six plus six is twelve plus six is 18. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 plus 6 is 28 Eight. points of fire damage. What does this look like? Um, well, um, you know, evocation, it's not, it's not really my thing. Um, but, um, I'm a little nervous here. And so I bring down the fire of heaven on her. Of the hells on her. The circle shifts slightly as you cast this powerful magic into it. And instead of being purple, it's now a reddish color. And the tendrils seem to fade away. I need you to make an arcana test. <gasps> Advantage. Advantage. Oh Advantage. Natural 20. <laughs> I mean, you might as well crit fish. We're at the end. Um, as your spell takes hold, and you can feel it take hold, you feel this connection pulling you in. You've dealt with extraplanar creatures. You you know what something trying to take control of you looks like. You also know how to ward against such control. And you press your magic into this circle, and you take it over. But it's rapidly becoming unstable now. Did you see my message? Did. We'll okay. There. Okay. Raja, it's your turn. Can I? Do I? Hold on. Oh, sorry. Before, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, 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 do I get the sense that, th that it's about to be dangerous for everybody around me? If you can't continue to control this magic, and she can't regain control of it, you're not really sure what's going to happen. I, I think that p perhaps you, you all should leave. That's my turn. Roger, your turn. Um, I 
kind of, but also, if I hear you, I do not show that I hear you. <laughs> um, as my spiritual weapon once again attacks her. <laughs> I'm going to use an advantage. Uh, that's only a 16. Okay. Unfortunately, that will not hit. Um, that's okay. Um, and just like almost stony cold again, I say to her, your mortality is worth it. As I use my channel divinity, uh, next attack, she that hits her, is she's vulnerable to it. To the grave! It always was. And I would like to back away um, heeding Lyra's warning because she knows what she's talking about. Okay. It's her turn. Now I'm going to I'm going to use my feline agility to get as far away as I can. Okay. You can see. Uh this strip is going to get a little gross. I'm going to try to keep it light though. You can see as the fire continues to burn her form. She's not holding together entirely. But it's not like a human where pieces fall off it's it's like an ooze as you saw the ooze slowly lose its solid state before so is this being it, it a piece will slough off and then it retains back into this humanoid woman form well if i can't control then you won't live to tell and she starts to melt away. And as she does, the ooze form takes in the fire and becomes bright red. And it becomes incredibly viscous. And it's like lava is flowing outward. Mally, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, does a 16 do it? You manage to start to move away. You're going to take nine points of fire damage. Okay, I'm still alive. The, the, the pillars holding up the candles begin to shake. Little bursts of energy start to come out from them. What are each of you doing? Ignore initiative. I'm disengaging right and walking away. Well, running away. Running away. Tactically retreating. I mean, retreating. Lyra, what are you doing? I'm muting. Um, um. You get the distinct impression that the second you let your magic go and you give up control of this, that it's going to become incredibly volatile. I take a deep breath. I close my eyes. And I hold tighter. Roll Arcana. Okay. Which is a 29. Well, I got a natural 20 because I rolled it. However, her bonus is only a plus 7. You felt this pulsation of power go forward. The heat disappear from your spell for a moment. The circle turning bright green. And it attempted to expand. But you lock in and hold it down. In doing so, you create this connection. And you hear voices. As you hear a thousand voices from infinite layers of a realm beyond. You know... You're not leaving this room. What are the rest of you doing? Can I, can I, really quickly? Sure. Cast Expeditious Retreat. On whom? On the last person out. Okay. Raju was already booking it. Mally was starting to book it. Barks to Elaine Daztrak. Underway! <laughs> Get Daz is fucking gone. Uh, Barks, <laughs> Barks and Elaine. Barks probably um, has an easier time getting out, I imagine. I hung back. I hung back. Um, I'll wait for Mally, and uh, if 
Alayan can't see, I'll probably be considerate for once and like grab her hand and just like pull towards the the exit. Begin to pull. I'm going to okay, good, good. try and ask Lyra to come with us because I don't know what she's doing, but we've got to go. What do I what do I look like? <laughs> It is taking all of your effort and concentration to control this. Um, your hair is like flowing outward, and it's almost like flames are licking at it. It's almost like the magic is coming from it and trying to go outward, and you're just directing it towards yourself, trying to hold it in for as long as you can. I Do I recognize any of what's going on as being directly related to, is it Huron? Huron? Uh, Kieran is the person who hired you. No. Who are you talking about? God, planar tree. Oh, 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 yes. Huron, yes. Nope, I, I do not ask her, I just go. Okay. I, uh, 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 never mind. I believe in you! you How do I say that name? Go. Ladrain. Ladrain. Tell Ladrain that I'm sorry, and tell my father I did everything for him. And as you all I will. flee, you feel this overwhelming wave of arcane energy, and fire and acid explode out of the room. You're not entirely sure what happened, but you know that you can watch this acidic lava burning through the floor of the cavern in that part. And you make haste back up into the building you came in. And that's where we're going to call a game. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in to this live version of Floofy Outlaws. Um, more happened in this session than has happened in the last six months in this IMRP game. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to say a big thank you to everybody. We had a lot of donations come through. Um, we hit another goal and had to raise it again. Uh, so thank you again. Um, I am Goat. You can find me on the internet as at Swaying Goat on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else now. Um, hang out in our Discord. We're pretty awesome. We like to do fun stuff. Uh, and my favorite moment of this session was probably uh, Daz giving the fortunes. Hi, I'm Ren, and I'll go second. I played Barks, the Null um, Rogue, I guess. They, he likes crossbows. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Thorny Dryad. Uh, it's under my name, like right here. It's like a prickly bush. Uh, come check me out. I stream stuff on Wednesdays and uh, Fridays, and I will be back here tomorrow for our Sunday stream of Death's Keepers, where I will play Devro Thistlebrook, a halfling fighter. And I am also the voice of a character called Eight in a podcast called Rogues Uncharted, which is a Genesis system actual play tabletop role-playing game. And we are recording our second season, and that will be releasing eventually. Uh, you can check out our backlog, and you can keep your eyes out for new fun stuff we're doing. We're available on all your favorite podcast distribution platforms words uh, apple spotify and google man y'all i have been up since well hey we've all been up early but i'm nailing these words right now my favorite part about this session uh, besides the fact that we did more than we have in the past six months uh is uh, oh goodness Honestly, I really liked the counterspell, followed by the, all right, if we can't escape with magic, we're just going to yeet you all to the ground with beads of force and then disappear anyways. That was pretty great. I'll go next. Hi, I'm Mare. You can find me on Twitter at Archmage of Dice. Um, on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on this channel, Open for Adventure, you can find me playing Lichten Bradlesby, the adaptable Jackie Rise Allotment. 
um, in the Numenera game run by our lovely GM, Alex. Um, I am also uh, starting to stream more on my channel, and you can find me on my Twitch channel at Marefeather, streaming uh, video games. And it's going to be a golden Sunday from here on out on every Sunday. Um, my favorite part was just the constant group bullshit from Mally. <laughs> I'll go next. I'm Graham, or Graham Crackers. You can find me here every Wednesday at, wait. I played Malian Way, Fox Foxwood, Taftra, uh, or Bark's lovable sister, as no one calls her. Um, and you can find me on Wednesday on Open for Adventure, playing Samander in the Uncaged Anthology game. Uh, you can find me on my own channel, Twitch TV slash Graham Crackers, every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard until about midnight, where I play Geharis Nerathos, a tiefling paladin. Uh, outside of that, you can find me occasionally someplace on the internet. And my favorite part was the gnome at the beginning that offered us a job. And just goat's wonderful, wonderful voice work for that character. I shall go next. Uh, I am Morgan. I had the delight of playing Daz Track, my chaotic little klepto. Um, and um, you can find me on uh, here on Open for Adventure on Mondays at 6.30 as I am part of Fate's Chosen. And um, you can find me online at Necro Alexander. Um, and my favorite part of the stream tonight was, uh, I think, was just the amount of lore that got slipped in in places. It was pretty freaking cool. We got to see, we got to be, see someone trying to become a lich with, uh, what's his name? The demon lord of oozes. I can't remember his name right now. At least that's what I. That's what my meta character name. That character's name is Jubilex. Yes. Um. Anyways. Uh. And I, I also really like Mally's fruit shenanigans. Those are those are pretty great. Um. Yeah. That's all I got. Hi, I'm Eva. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitch at Eva Serate and. Twitter, Instagram, at the Eva Serate, um, because someone else took my name. Uh, I had the joy of being a land today. Um, my panicky, weird little human girl. Um, ranger girl. Um, and that was a lot of fun to play her uh, for reals for only a 15 year gap since I created her. Um, my favorite part was, um, I think when we were all searching the house, like before things went sideways, uh, cause everyone kind of went off and did their own thing. Uh, and it was an interesting look at, uh, characters that I really liked. Um, and I had good times with that. Um, I can also be found tomorrow's, tomorrow's, shit, Sundays. 3 p.m. Central uh, on Death Keepers, um, playing a much more fashionable um, but also human cleric. Uh, every other Saturday, uh, a secret project, I think, has more or less been announced. Um, Ren and I will be trying to survive an urban campaign, uh, also on my channel. I feel like there was something else. Anyway. That's me. That's all I got. <laughs> Hi! Uh, I'm Camille. You can find me on Twitter at Camille Does DND. You can also find the channel on Twitter at Open the Number Four Adventure. Thank you so much, y'all, for having me on as a guest today. I had a lot of fun playing your um, very nervous little Lyra Kent again. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm so glad she could dive to save all of your lives. Uh, you're welcome. Um, my favorite part was also I'm gonna steal goats. Um, the pretty much anytime Daz opened their mouth, I was here for it. So this, the the fortune telling was was very good. Uh, hey, all we hit our goal. 
four thousand dollars. Again, we hit our goal again. Again, again. Like yeah. The thirteenth time today. Um, Holy and we've still got two a game and a, a game and chilling time. Which chilling yeah. time is going to start here momentarily? So stick around. It's going to be a. It's going to be a time with our our good people Kappa and Seth. So some questions about the lobster cult. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, prepare for some weird chat commands. Um, anyway, love you all. Keep following us. Uh, stay tuned for more to come. And we will see y'all shortly. Oh, baby, I love your madness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Oh, you shine like gold. So selfless to all, and wild like an animal. Uh -huh. Some would say I'm insane and the right in a way, but it's just love to play.